Shields up, Ironbreakers. Welcome back to Conscast. And today I have the legendary 269 and Paradise Central with me. And we are going to be talking about Grand Blue Fantasy Relink as well as Monster Hunter Wilds. I'm still not sure if I'm going to be able to put it all into one podcast because I'm sure these are going to be very <laughs> lengthy topics. But how have you guys been doing? Paradise Central, go ahead. Yeah, really good. We had our holiday break. We're back. Full steam ahead. Uh, quite busy, but it's it's good to be busy when you're back, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of games coming out this year. I know Wilds is next year, but uh, there's still a lot of games coming out this year. Obviously, like you say, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is very close and is a game that we've been covering quite a lot, so... That's probably the first thing in our in our sight line. But there is a lot more. And uh, I'm feeling positive about the year as well. You know, new year, new possibilities. So yeah, feeling good. How about you, 2-6? Yeah, this last year was pretty crazy. So that holiday did me pretty well. I don't know what was going on last year. It was just like a game every two to three <laughs> weeks. That was a banger. Not even just a normal good quality game. It was like extraordinarily good for games last year. Um, so it felt like... Every time we were about to take a, a little bit chill time to kind of gather ourselves, it didn't really ever come. And then that rest period, now I'm raving and ready to go. But it it, it seems like the same thing's happening for this first couple of months because essentially we have Grand Blue, then Grand Blue goes into Final Fantasy Remake and Final Fantasy well, Rebirth is like one of my favourite games of all time. And then it goes into Dragon's Dogma and on the same day as Dragon's Dogma is Rise of the Ronin. And then in yeah. between that... There's like Power World and all these other games. It's crazy if you are a gamer, a true gamer, a culture gamer that plays all the games. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 gonna be very rough. I already had to like say, "Hey, listen, Rise of the Ronin." Like, look, I was. <laughs> a bit I, all. I'm, <laughs> I'm <laughs> very, <laughs> I'm very curious. I'd really like to check it out, but like, listen, yeah. I've been waiting for Dragon's Dogma two for so many years. It's yeah. it's completely insane. But yeah, 20, 2023, it's like, I feel like that's been one of the best gaming years since like, I think the last time it was this good was like 2017, which if I remember correctly, is when we got like Nier Automata, when we got like Breath of the Wild and all of that stuff. It was another fantastic year. But 2023 was like on the level of that. And so I would like to ask you, and we'll start with 2-6, what were your top three games? of 2023 because i know that just picking one was going to be rough so like what would have been your top three games like the 269 game awards of 2023 top three games of give me give me a reminder of the games that actually came out because there was so many there was definitely not diablo 4 no, I'm going to tell you that Diablo 4 was not on my top list. <laughs> no. Oh, but, no. Um, I, was, I was so disappointed with Diablo 4. God wait, I can re I'll reel a few off to refresh yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, 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 go. Uh, by the way, there's a lot, so I'll, I'll try and be quick. So, Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Diablo 4, Spider-Man 2, uh, Pikmin 4, Mario Bros. Wanda, Jedi Survivor, Fire Emblem Engaged, Armored Core, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Lies of P, Forspoken, Company of Heroes 3, Deliver Us Mars, Atomic Heart, uh, sea of Stars wasn't that new Amnesia game? Uh, Payday Three and uh, quite a lot Redfall and quite a lot Starfield. I'm about I'm about uh, to Ball. hurt. I'm about to hurt Paradise Central. <laughs> I'm just reading off, reading off the games. I'm, go I'm not saying I'm they're gonna, good. I'm gonna hurt you, Paradise. Not because of the games that you're reading, because of the one that you haven't read yet. Uh, I'll just, hurt I'm just you. Going off of Google. <laughs> <laughs> just going off of Google's <laughs> ranking, dude. Where's Remnant 2 on that list? God yeah. damn it. Well, yeah. Remnant 2 is one of those games that is an amazing game. Okay. But it doesn't get like recognized and it's not exactly in, like do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, Which is why um, we need to talk about it. <laughs> well, yeah. well, what can I say? <laughs> so, so so out of those, like what what would you go oh, for? Oh, Alan Wake 2 as well. That was big for some people. Yeah, yeah. I would say uh it would have to be Remnant 2 at the top of my list. Yes! Uh, for my favorite game. Yes! <laughs> That's I what I'm talking about. Oh, Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, Hogwarts Legacy was okay. Like, I liked it. I'm not really a Harry Potter fan, so I can't really re like be like, oh, yeah, Harry Potter is like the greatest game. Um, but the second game, I'm trying to remember which one you said. There was another game that was... Tears of Kingdom. Really, really liked that game because of the building stuff. I really got into that. Uh, I didn't really like... Oh, Breath that was also another one. 
By the way, you, did, you also didn't mention Spotify another 16. one. Yeah, I was about to bring that. <laughs> what was That's that? a pretty important one. What's 16. the other word? 16. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There he is. Oh, we sold it. There, <laughs> there, there it is. is. <laughs> That's the final slot. Final Fantasy 16 was such a good and bad game at the same time. It had like really good moments and really boring moments. Like you're saving the world and you're fighting gods in space. And then next second, like a little kid's pickpocket kid, you, you and you're running around. And you're like, why? How can I be an actual god? And then next second, getting robbed by like a five year old. <laughs> Just didn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good game though. I really liked it. I like the music. Um, I want to see them do more. Soken doesn't world. miss, dude. Soken yeah. doesn't miss. Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy that game? Oh, I I absolutely loved it. Like I played yeah. the crap out of. I didn't even mind the uh, the side quest as much as most people did. The only thing that kind of bothered me was there was one moment, one specific moment where you see a cutscene, and you can tell like, oh, my friends are in danger. I got to go help them. And immediately the game's like, here's ten new side quests. I was like. <laughs> the pacing is a little off. Yeah, it's like, the pacing was off. It, it, it's like at least let me do that quest where I save my friends and then give me ten side quests. I'll have no problem with it. But when it was kind of like your friends are in danger, ten new side quests. I was like, mm, that yeah. was not cool. But the side quests themselves didn't bother me because I played so much fourteen that it's whatever. <laughs> so Baldur's Gate three not on your top three list. I didn't play it. I didn't play Baldur's Gate 3. I'm not... I, all my experiences with uh, Dungeons and Dragons have left a sour taste in my mouth. So I, I don't play <laughs> D&D. Our D&D expert is Paradise. He loves it. He plays it. He covers it. But uh, Baldur's Gate is one of those ones where I'm looking at it right now, and I know that I will probably enjoy it, but every you time I play You just don't have with, the time. Yeah. I don't yeah. have the time. Uh, I think we originally played it when it was in like early, early access. access. In... And we did multiplayer. And we did but multiplayer. I, to be really, fair, multiplayer was it. really like it was really off back then in the early access. Like, I would, the connection yeah. wasn't great. There was problems. Yeah. I would highly yeah. recommend at some point that you get into it, especially now mm. that it's more polished. Like I had some issues with the game. I, I talked about it, but yeah. Anyway, um, Paradise, sound off. Your your. Favorite right. three Top games three, of yeah, 23. Three is hard, I will say, because <laughs> yeah, there's know. a lot of games that came out that <laughs> I, I really liked. Um, number one's got to be Wild Hearts. Everyone forgot about it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 Wait, Bro, Wild Hearts last year? Pour, <laughs> pour on one out for... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> pour one out for Wild Hearts, dude. God damn, yeah. that game had so much potential. They completely ruined that. I'm so sad for that game. We went in with, like... We were, I won't talk about Wild Hearts for too long, but yeah, we had really high hopes, like you say, and yeah. it was like good. It was really good for a very little bit of time, and then you start encountering all the problems, and then the end game wasn't quite as fleshed out, and you know all these things. But so that was. Know, game, but you know what? I what still, killed it for us was the weapon change, though, because we used that spinny weapon, and then they just nerfed blade. it. Yeah, the you guys blade, used and then the, they just nerfed it. The what now? The spin, the one uh, that, attack, the attack on Titan, Titan three D oh, maneuver. Okay, cause, because <laughs> when you said the spinny weapon, I was thinking of the umbrella. I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, I don't remember yeah, them does, nerfing that. I think that, they buffed it. That does spin. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it does, yeah. To, to yeah me, they, that was our main weapon, and we were, we were doing all the endgame content up until one patch where they completely nerfed the weapon into the ground, completely changed the way it functions and the flow of what you do, and dramatically reducing your damage because of that. Uh, and then at that point, you know, there was already issues with the game as well, so at that point it was like... I'm not so, even having fun playing my weapon anymore, you know? I, w I will tell you guys how my final moments in Wild Hearts went. It was on a live stream. Yeah. And that live stream ended at the same time as my time with Wild Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys know how the, the hammer, right? Because I'm sure you mm. guys played the hammer because did the weapon guides and all that, right? You know how the hammer has that one move with the little thing that, um, what's it called? I forget, the stake thrower thing that would like, eat you into the monster yeah yeah. Mm, yeah so the hammer has that one move where if you use that and you come up off the air and it does that spinning thing back and then it hits the monster right in the face right that's yeah. like about the same damage as the full final hit of the charged hammer so you're like okay if a monster is moving really fast i'm gonna rely more on this attack because i'm not gonna have that many openings and if you remember the the last couple of like what do they call them the the super dangerous kimono whatever uh, those were like super fast, super punishing, super whatever, right? And so I'm using the hammer and I'm having to rely on this thing. 
and it doesn't work properly. So sometimes you would do the thing and your character would randomly grab onto the monster for no reason. Other yeah. times you would do the thing and the jump would just be a normal jump that wouldn't let you do the special attacks. Yeah, and then other times right. <laughs> and other times you would get to do the special attack. And so I'm fighting the 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 raven. I, I forget what it was, but it was the super powered version of the raven, the really? very yeah, last one. Clubie? It was it was probably yeah, something like that. But I'm fighting that. And it's just one shotting me over and over and it's like super hard <laughs> and I'm getting really frustrated because I'm trying to use the, the stake thing to deal damage. And I get to the point where like, look, I've, I'm so pissed off with this mechanic and chat is like egging you on, right? They're like, ah, yeah. you suck. You're bad. <laughs> and I was like, listen, if this thing messes up one more goddamn time, I'm done. And so I jump on it. It goes to the monster and it clutches. And I'm like, that's it. Close the game, uninstall right there. And oh, no. Uninstalled. The, <laughs> like, the I uninstalled, uninstalled it on stream. It was really bad. Oh like, I love the game, but like, yeah. it was very frustrating that that specific thing just didn't work properly. So I was like, I'm done. They anyway, had a chance oh, there as well with that game yeah. as well. It came at a good time. Like, Rise wasn't getting as much content as people were expected. It had introduced like new weapons that people were interested in and it had a boom but it just didn't have let it like as you guys would say cook for enough so yeah it's like yeah the, the situation there to me was also like they had this really unique thing in the whole uh you can build your camps wherever you want i mm, love that aspect yeah, of it and yeah. just building zip lines everywhere it's almost like you're and playing farms death stuff because you yeah. can put like resource generating things down it was brilliant i loved it i loved that yeah, yeah I, I had i actually had a bunch of them by by the end i had like a bunch of locations where it's like hey and here there's like six boats that are constantly gathering fish for me next to like these six things that dry <laughs> and the other six things that you then put to, to gain yeast or whatever it was and the other six things to then smoke it and there's just like this yep. big restaurant <laughs> In there the was still a the problem wild. with that system though well, a it was terrible problem for, I hate for multiplayer it. players like us so me and me and two six were playing together throughout the whole campaign so he was in my world the whole campaign so if he wanted to do anything on his solo oh, yeah. save when i'm not around he didn't have any of the camps he didn't have anything built he couldn't get any resources it was like it was basically like having a fresh save on his side even though he had beat the game with me oh, which was a, a problem in of itself yeah so yeah a lot of, a lot of issues with Wild Hearts. But, but going back to the list yeah, I'll yeah, yeah. Get, get back to the list. I think I will. I will have Baldur's Gate on there. Um, <clears throat> still playing through it in my own time. It's a massively long game. Um, I both love it and also hate that like you can sit down and play it for a, an hour or two and you really didn't get very far. But that's the kind of game it is, you know. But yeah. for what it is, and also uh, you know, we played it in early access. I'd had my eyes on Baldur's Gate for a long time, so got to have it there. I will put Tears of the Kingdom in there as well, uh, which I initially. Went into it expecting it to be like Breath of the Wild 2, but the, all of the different building systems and uh, just the fun that you could have in that game and the Underdark kind of sold me on Tears of the Kingdom. So uh, for that reason, it's quite a memorable and fun uh, game. How long did you spend on that uh, that bike that we all designed with uh, the fans? <laughs> the, and two, the, the two fan the bike. The two fans <laughs> like this. Once you made that, it was game over because then you yeah, just you like, just oh, well, forget, everywhere. Any other, forget everything else. That one's easy. <laughs> Um, but you did have to be really careful when you're building it because otherwise you just, you know, if the counterbalancing wasn't right, you could just go flying. Yeah, but that's why you'd um, save it. You just save it afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the first time you got, you know, you got to be really meticulous with the exact angle to get it right. Oh, yeah. Um, but for my third game, uh, probably, I would probably have to do Final Fantasy 16 because that was an epic adventure. Like, yeah, it wasn't yeah. like really a Final Fantasy RPG that we wanted, but the action combat was fun and the boss fights were. Like for me, if, if it's memorable, which a lot of those boss fights were, then it's kind of a mark of a of a good which one, game. Which one was the favorite one? Oh, the Bahamut one, probably. The Bahamut, I don't Bahamut think was really good. I, I will say, I, I will say something else. My favorite yeah. was Titan. Actually, I love Titan. Titan. Which one? The which, ver which version? The very first one that you do with Titan. Not the wait. Was it the first one? Um, no, which the, is the one with the, the falling? Because because the, the first the one, one, right? The the first one is just when you fight him in, inside the it's castle, just right? And you're yeah, like, no, 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 no. Yeah, it was yeah. it was the second one, the one where you're actually yeah. running up his arms and you hear yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Because you get That's like the fun. new Titan music, and I love the Titan music. It's just so good, and it reminds me of <laughs> Titan and fourteen and whatnot. It was just really, really good. I loved it. Yeah, 
So yeah. But I have to give honorable mentions to uh, Hogwarts Legacy. Really did enjoy that. I am. I wouldn't sound like a, a big Harry Potter fan, but it's been a long time since. Like, did you ever play like the Harry Potter games, like PS One days? No. And, like, I, that's the thing. They're, I'm like not, memes listen, now. I was I was forced <laughs> to watch Harry Potter by my girlfriend at the time, who is now my wife, <laughs> and I I didn't really care for the movies at all, so I don't think I'd care for the games either. Well, that's totally fair. I totally get it because it's like it's 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 like some people don't like. Uh, Lord of the Rings, or some people don't like. Um, no, that's not acceptable. You know, other big fantasy trilogies. <laughs> not, not liking Lord of the Rings is just not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> but there was way more games as well. Like, like you know, listen, my favorite was, part was still really good. My favorite part of the Harry Potter movies was when he died. But that was all a lie. So I was like, oh man, that's Aww. garbage. God damn it! I was so happy he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but yeah, oh, yeah I, like, Wo Long I, came out in 2013 as well. It that did. Was, that was pretty good. Did, did you like it enough to be like, oh man, stop on my list? No. Yeah, not, I didn't the think games. so. It was good. <laughs> it was good, but there were just like a lot of good games. I think that really quickly, if I was to say my own, it would be definitely Remnant 2 on top. I loved Remnant 2. It was amazing. Um, and then it's kind of like super close. Armored Core 6 and Final Fantasy 16. I loved Armored Core 6 and 16. It was just like really good. And and again, you can't talk about last year without Tears of the Kingdom. Like you guys know how I, did you guys both beat Tears of the Kingdom? I haven't even uh, actually beat it yet. I just spent so much time just messing around in the world. And I, the thing for me with Zelda is I want the new Zelda games to be more like Ocarina of Time and have that kind of... Yeah narrative to it but it's lacking that so i don't get the enjoyment mm. out of completing the story the kind of sandbox elements of tears of the kingdom is why i really enjoyed it there's um there's some really cool story beats in this one more so than yeah. uh breath because like with breath of the wild i would agree with you i feel like okay the story in breath of the wild is whatever because you know that when breath of the wild came out a lot of people kind of ignored zero dawn and i was like bro yeah. zero dawn had a better story than breath of the wild in my opinion yeah. like way better i thought zero dawn was amazing <laughs> But I feel like Tears of the Kingdom story was actually significantly better. It actually got me a little bit emotional at some times because of some of the stuff that takes place. But the thing that I wanted to bring up is, um, so I'm not going to spoil anything, um, but just know that like... I've had the game spoil. I won't say for too soon. I've had the game spoil for me. Yeah, but, 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 it's like, <laughs> but it's like before the final boss, there's like this thing that happens that's almost like a, a horde type situation, right? Yeah. Just to give you guys an idea, I made a tank. <laughs> I made yeah, like a literal <laughs> like a literal tank with like the different parts that you could have like you know those parts that have the not the ones with the wheels but like the sleds the sleds yeah, yeah that so I would up, have yeah. like the bottom part would be one of the ones with wheels and then I would have like mm. those big wheels on it and then I would have the sleds on the side and in the front and on top so it's like a legit straight up tank and then on the top I'd put like one of those things that aims at enemies yeah and then with like five or six laser turrets. Oh, yeah, like, so like, good. And OP, and I'm, just, OP, OP. I'm just like running around, man. And it's like, it deleted everything in that horde fight. It was disgusting. I loved it. That's tried what using so it. I tried using it on the final boss. Didn't work out so well. <laughs> final oh. boss was like, no, nope, not today. Nope, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really really fun but yeah 2023 yeah. was uh friggin magical so now just like real quick for 2024 three games that you're most excited for two six go so it's going to be grand blue it's going to be dragon's dogma and it's going to be final fantasy rebirth so my three games that i'm most excited for are coming out in like <laughs> they're coming three, three out months. right now <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's so, like uh it's super exciting times grand blue is probably Actually, I'm not even going to say that because Final Fantasy is just like so nostalgic and like close to my yeah. heart. I'm not going to even say that. But for new games, exciting. Grand Blue is like, we've been kind of underselling it on our channel. But for I've we've been played, overselling we've, it, so it's okay. <laughs> uh, we've like, <laughs> I like it more than we've said in our like previews or any of our videos because I don't want to you don't want to sell it to people. people. Yeah, yeah. yeah overhype over people. But it's like mm. much better. And I think what sign-up players are going to love it. Like, absolutely love it. I don't know. We'll see. Paradise? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll try and pick different ones so there's not too much crossover, because I, I, otherwise I'd probably just end up saying the same. But I will say Dragon's Dogma 2 has to be a crossover, because I've been yep. waiting for that game for years and years and years. Like, yes! There's no way that's not on there. Um, <laughs> 
I literally, I literally can't wait. Um, Black Myth Wukong is a game that we've been really excited for for a long time. Uh, and from everything we've seen, looks really cool. So I'm really hoping it it, it will play good. Um, and then I won't pick Rebirth because Two Six has picked that, but instead I will pick Stalker Two because that's another game that, as like a big survival like apocalypse kind of game fan, Stalker Two has been like as you would say cooking for a long time now. And it's looking really good from everything I've seen, so I'm really excited for that. But there are there is a a couple other games that are sort of on the radar for like what I'm interested in. So uh, Star Wars Outlaws, like you don't really see a lot of people talking about that, but I think it's it has because potential. it's a Ubisoft game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was um, a time when Ubisoft used to make bangers. But yeah, 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 exactly. Like, uh... like listen, I've been railing on Ubisoft ever since Odyssey because yeah, I was very disappointed with what they did with oh yeah, you get the the XP booster and the coin doubler and all. I was like, bro, come on. it's a single player <laughs> open world. Come on, man, what are you doing? But yep. yeah, that, and that made me Brooke, and did you ever play Helldivers, the first one? Because Helldivers I did. Is coming out. Dude, I'm so I'm so <laughs> I'm so sad that it comes out so close to Grand Blue Fantasy, dude. Cause like I know that I'm gonna still be super deep into Grand Blue Fantasy, but I definitely want to see if I can pump out like a couple of videos on it. I am super hyped. You guys gonna cover that? I don't know, to be honest. Um like Oh god, it, it, it hurts. It depends on it it's depends on date. how, like, because I know how the first game plays, right? And there is, like, strategies, and you could talk about potential builds, because you did kind of, like, build your character yeah. with, like, the gadgets that you take and the weapons that you take. The second, this new one's obviously more like a third-person shooter. Um, so I don't know. It depends on, like, if there's content breadth and width there. Yeah. Uh, but it will probably be a game that I'll enjoy, like, personally, but I don't know if we plan to actually go into content. We'll see. So... It's like, look, I, as much as I want to try to avoid the same games that we've already talked about, uh, there is one game in like my top three that we haven't talked about, which will be Light No Fire. Oh, yeah, I yeah, am yeah, yeah, super yeah, hyped yeah, for Light yeah, No yeah, Fire. Yeah, yeah. I think that after what they've done with No Man's Sky, I think that game's going to be amazing. Uh, but I still have to say Dragon's Dogma 2. Like, look, I've been waiting for Dragon's Dogma 2 for so long. I've been singing its praises for so long. I'm like, this is one of the most underrated games ever. It didn't get its fair shake. Everybody buy this game right now. So, yeah, it, I'm super hyped for that one as well. But uh, rather than say Grand Blue Fantasy, which we're going to be talking about a lot, I will uh, say Dawn Trail. Dawn Final Trail. Fantasy nice. 14 expansion. Expansion. Yeah. yeah. I'm super pumped for it. So, yeah. The new classes look cool, aside from the Picto Monster. I don't know why, like... What do you mean, the, like, the, new, the new classes? Like you mean the new colorful. class? <laughs> the, the Viper? It, it's, it's, yeah, it's Viper. There's a limited class, the Beastmaster, yeah, the, right? Yeah, the Beastmaster, yeah. And then there's the... Yeah, the <laughs> Picto <Picked> Monster. <laughs> <laughs> like Picto <laughs> Well, that's fair. So uh, I want to I wanna bring us into Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, though. Um, so first I got to ask, how long have you guys been following it? We need to establish a hierarchy here. Two uh, six was on this game like since I think the moment it was even revealed and maybe even was it? That, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it would have been you? like eight years. It would have been eight or ten years ago. Yeah, or whatever oh. they revealed it from the initial Relink. Damn. Okay. Like concept so, stuff. Okay, so you win. You win. I, I accept. The <laughs> like I, I, I started following it when Scalebound got cancelled. It's actually the reason why I started oh, following that's it. A fool, that's a, bring it yeah, back. Bring back Scalebound. Been, yeah. yeah, dude. Bring like the worst part about Scalebound was that I actually saw it being played in front of me and I was in the same room as Kamiya at Gamescom. Yeah, <laughs> you know, he was doing crazy. a presentation on it <laughs> yeah. and the game was running in front of me and then suddenly it's canceled. And I was like, what do you mean? I bought an Xbox for this. What do you mean? <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> it's literally you know, you the know only reason I got it. I'll tell you like a little story. So when me and Alex used to work at like Microsoft, there was like a folder before the consoles had even launched. So this is years before Xbox One and all of those projects had even been announced. We were still on 360. And Alex was like, oh yeah, you got, you got to come over here and see all of this stuff because he had access to those files and folders. And he showed me all like the games coming up. And I was like, whoa, it was like a little mini E3. Yeah. And I saw Scalebound and I was like, what is this? This is going to be like incredible. And it just never came out. So I was super hyped for it for like years before it even was like announced. And oh my God. It never that, came out. That's even that's even worse if you're yeah. hyped <laughs> before it was announced. <laughs> like I, I was I was covering it. I did a bunch of videos on it and I was super excited about it. And then it got canceled. Mm. 
And when that got canceled, I went to the Platinum Games website and I was like, okay, so if you're canceling this, what are you working on? And that's yeah. when I first saw it. It wasn't even called Grand Blue Fantasy. It was just called Project Relink. I'd never even heard of Grand Blue Fantasy at all. I didn't know what it was. Yeah. And then I started looking at trails. I was like, oh, this looks really good. This was um, almost seven years ago when I first yeah. started looking into it. But yeah, I've been following it ever since. It was, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. How about you, Paradise? Uh, how, long, how long have you been following it? We know that 2.6 Only, is the OG. Yeah. Um, probably really just the last couple of years as like the marketing and stuff has really started to come out. Uh, and because they did, de- like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they delayed it a few times. And like, oh, yeah. Or we, you know, it's been in the works for like, yeah, about eight, eight, nine years. Uh, right. But for me, like, really, it's only really the last couple of years that it's been like forefront on my radar. And the more I see, the more I like the look of it. And I think I think it's just going to be a blast. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink is actually one of the reasons why I started, you know, I've always been like this super fan of um, of Platinum Games ever since I played Vanquish. I was like, mm. bro, these, these guys know what's up. Like, Vanquish is amazing. <laughs> these guys are the best. Like, what's going on? And then when I started seeing, like, you know, Scalebound got canceled because Microsoft doesn't want to work with you or whatever reason there was. And then it's like, and now Psy Games kicked you off of their products. Like, what are you guys doing over there? You guys just like, you guys just doing drugs or something? Like spending all of your budget? I, I don't know what's going on. So that was one of the reasons why I was like, mm, Platinum Games, they, they have quite a few bangers, but a lot of times they also have quite a few misses. And, yeah. you know, I was, eh, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but yeah. So, what is your favorite <clears throat> Platinum Games game? Vanquish. Just Vanquish? Yeah, I, I don't even have to hesitate. I love it. It's like the whole thing of when you you would slide and it would go into slow motion and you would be just like popping off shots. It's just like super satisfying in the scenarios that happen in that game. Like Vanquish is one of those games that really solidified the whole thing to me where I'm like, oh, uh, you know how people always say that, oh, I need to get at least one uh, one hour per dollar that I spend in a video game for it to be worth it? <laughs> I always tell people, listen, I paid 50 euros, which is like full price in Portugal, 50 euros, full price on a digital store, not dig- an online store, because if you go to retail, it's like way more. But back then, 50 euros was like the standard. I paid 50 euros for Vanquish, which is full price. I got like 12 hours out of it, and I would never take that back. Yeah, it's just satisfying. A game doesn't need to necessarily have like a time limit on it for it to be like worth your time. As long as you get that gratification out of it, it's all good. I but loved it. Go ahead. I will say, find it funny that one of your favorite games is a shooter or a gunner game, and you're always roasting gunners. <laughs> and what's, on, what's going on? Please explain. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I don't think I roast gunners. I think I roast longsword users more than because the thing to me is that. Whenever I tell a gunner, yeah, your weapon's broken, they're like, yeah, it is. They, they don't, they don't argue with me. They don't, they don't try to convince me otherwise. With that the wasn't thing the thing that hurt me, though. The thing that hurt me is that you said it was boring. You said it was boring to play, and anyone that plays it is boring. There's one time when did I was I, like... Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, t- I take that back, okay? I take that back. I, I don't think... Uh, you know, sometimes I say that memeing, though. You know, it's no, that's like, true. Oh, true. Yeah. I totally understand what you're saying. There. No, but like, I, I, and and listen, during Colf Tarot days, I absolutely AFK'd using a light bowgun. I mean, you pretty much just AFK. Pa pa pa, pa pa pa. <laughs> just like that's that's what I was doing. But like the um the the thing about the the thing that upsets me about longsword users more than anything is that whenever I tell them their weapons are broken, they're like, no. Why, why would you say such a thing? And when I talk about Bogan, you're still like, no, you're right. Like, if you go up to, say, Famito or mm. Angbata, and you tell them, like, hey, your weapon's broken, they're like, yeah, it is. It's really good, isn't it? <laughs> like, that's what they have to say. So I usually don't have that much to say about Bogans. It's, yeah. it's more longsword users. That, that's the real problem. But what constitutes it as being, like, overpowered or busted? What, the longsword? Just it's... any weapon in general. I mean, the sheer amount of damage that you can output when compared to other weapons. And the, the amount of effort that you need to put but in, then, which in Rise is not that much. Base but Rise. Are you and comparing is the damage output in the hands of like a near pro player speedrunner? Because if See, you put every weapon in the hands of a, like, a casual player, they're all probably going to come out. 
this is so Several good because mid, like four, five, six minute long hunts, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, I made a video specifically about this. Well, that, I don't actually. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, was gonna, I was gonna be like, oh wow. <laughs> it, it was funny too because, like, I was telling people, like, listen, I'm going to grab longsword and fight one of the monsters that I'm terrible at with the mm. longsword, and then compare the time that I would get with longsword versus the time that I would get with the gun lance. And the longsword was way faster. Way but faster. But does that mean that gun lance is bad, though? It doesn't mean that, that the longsword is good. <laughs> no, because you have to consider one thing, which is I had I don't really have any practice with the longsword whatsoever. And I was just like <laughs> landing <laughs> yai slashes like no, nobody's re- business and absolutely what destroying... Said, what? Because if you have really a really high amount of practice in a weapon, that weapon should be killing a monster, like speedrunner sort of times, you know? Whereas yes. if you can just switch switch to another weapon, be it long sword, sword and shield, or great sword, and all of a sudden you're just slaying them way easier, is that because those weapons are overpowered, or because but the, a weapon like a gun lance just isn't see, putting out the damage? The thing is, this was also a part of an argument where people were telling me that like, oh, but long sword takes skill. It does though, because you have I to mean, have like the timing on the actual counters, and not everybody else can <laughs> counter. Or I was able parry. to do it just fine. <laughs> Well, you and know, I, so you, you and here's the Hunter. thing: you're a Monster Hunter veteran. I expect yeah. you to be able to counter or roll or have time in. But like <laughs> I was, I was like getting hit all over the place, and I was still just like putting out ridiculous amounts of damage. Like you, if you actually yeah. watch that video, you'll see me like get slapped around by Apex Rathian all over the goddamn map, while still absolutely destroying her <laughs> because yeah. it's just really powerful. So what you're telling me is that. <laughs> The longsword has better burst damage than the actual weapon that's got a move called like burst. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, all right. Now, what I'm telling you is that in Rise, the longsword has better burst than anything else. Which which Monster Hunter game do you feel had the best gun lance? Like gameplay. I mean, gameplay wise, here's the thing. I, and damage, just overall, you, okay. the one that like, had the most like overall gameplay. I don't think any of them had like a particularly good one. <laughs> maybe maybe like I three ultimate but i wasn't <laughs> maybe like three ultimate but i i wasn't really that skilled at playing the game back then but definitely gunlands mm. felt powerful when i was playing it in three ultimate but uh you know since then what have we got we got the heat gauge we got wyvern stake blast we got all of these things like even in return to world i tried playing gunlands again and i was like no you know what i think i'll just play charge blade it's way more fun so much fun <laughs> But uh, yeah, j- jumping back into Grand Blue Fantasy <laughs> Rewink. So, quite a tangent, that was. <laughs> yeah, that was quite the tangent. So it's like, um, how was your play experience? Because you got to actually play it, 269. Like, tell us tell us more. Like, what was it like? What was the event like? What was happening? So I've got to play it twice now. So the initial demo was just a small section where it was basically just a boss fight or two boss fights if you defeated the first boss. Um Fast enough, you essentially got a second secret boss to spawn, but that demo was really good for trying out all the different characters and getting a feel for them and seeing what their different core mechanics are. And the massive takeaway from there is um, that the combat is way more simple than you think it's going to be the first time that you get your hands on, but where the actual complexity comes out of it is through the different characters and through little nuances in the actual combat. So you will be pressing x and triangle a lot and spamming out those two buttons but there's like abilities that you can use and positioning and team synergies that you can actually really get into um to kind of really bring in that complexity into the game but the combat was just fun like when you play it for the first time you're gonna see it's like a polished game like you can feel that it's been in development for eight years not in terms of like the content breadth and width (laughs) but definitely in terms of um how polished it is it just feels like feels good it just feels fun to so play. there there's just this this one thing which is i i remember hearing you say this in in your in in you guys videos which was when you whenever you say that the combat is not as complex so i'm analyzing a, a lot of the gameplay and whatnot that uh, the developers yeah. have put out and i'm like okay so you got your basic uh four skills which every character is going to be able to choose four skills that they can uh use which i'm assuming those are cooldown based right yeah, they're cooldown based. There, okay. is, there is an uh, essentially a link time thing that you can put them into once you get your gauge far enough that will reduce their cooldowns. But 
every ability has different cooldowns on them and some yeah. are like defensive, some are offensive. So you, you have those abilities, you have like, I'm assuming a, a standard attack and then like a special attack, almost like the two attack buttons that you have in Monster Hunter, right? Which yeah, 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 there's yeah. those two. Yeah, yeah. Then there's a dodge and X is what? Jump, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, yeah. Boss yeah, would yeah. be jump. Okay, so there's dodge, jump, two attacks. And then you have the four skills, then there's link attacks. And then there's mm -hmm. Skybound Arts. Yeah. And that's everything. That's everything, basically. So where I say that it's not as like complex as, say, something like, I don't know. It, it, it's a Platinum Games, right? It started as a yeah. Platinum game, and then it went to side games. So if you're expecting something like Bayonetta or Devil May Cry, that is not what you're getting. You're getting very simple combos. Um, I think on the combo list for most of the characters, there's like four or five different permutations of the combos that you can do. And some of them are variations of square square hold square or square square pause or square square tap square or t square square triangle okay so um there are variations there but there's not as many as you would expect in a normal action rpg or say something like monster hunter um in a way so that's where the compl complexity in the base combos isn't as like drastic as you would expect in other action games but you do have your abilities that are switchable and you do have uh, combinations of like aerial attacks and like link attacks and skybound arts. I don't think anybody's going to be severely disappointed with the combat because it feels good to play when you do trigger like a skybound art or a link attack or any of the abilities, but it might not necessarily have a depth for somebody to do like a combo video like they do in Devil May Cry where you see them hitting smoky, sexy style and do those crazy like, like the uh or whatever. A Sun Hill legend like montage. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I I think that actually might be an advantage for the game because mm. if you think about, for instance, when it comes to um Sunbreak and Monster Hunter World, right? And uh, let's say Sunbreak versus Iceborne, I would argue that Iceborne's combat is a little bit simpler than the combat that you have in Sunbreak, but yet Iceborne is a lot more uh popular, so to speak than necessarily Sunbreak. Although that also has to do with visuals and all of this other stuff, right? So who knows? But I think that there is something about um, the simplicity of it and then just having stuff be more kind of like uh, raid-type encounters, right? <clears throat> yeah. And speaking of which, Paradise, I know that you are like super into MMOs and stuff like that because I always see you covering like the big uh, MMORPG type <laughs> games and whatnot over on Eric's name, like Blue Protocol and all of that, this other stuff, right? So like I'm, I'm assuming that you're super excited about the almost the raid type vibes that we're getting from uh, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. So that's the thing. Like we, I haven't played Destiny in a while. Uh, Destiny two, and I've played I see Destiny that, one, but I haven't played Destiny. I see that as an absolute win. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but what I will say is that, and this ties into just MMOs in general as well. But when I think of raiding, I think of like the Destiny raids, or I think of like the Guild Wars two dungeons, or like even like WoW dungeons and stuff like that. But I call out Destiny specifically because there were certain raids that really required teamwork and communication and sometimes you just feel like i just miss just miss that you know because there's something special about pulling it off going through a really hard encounter and just acing it with your friends um and it being challenging and rewarding and when i see those you know those end game clips that are out there for grand blue and you've got a monster doing laser beams ground aoe's unblockable things and you've got to like time a perfect dodge to hit invincible or you're dead or just like crazy things like that happening everywhere while you're also meant to be maintaining your dps uptime maybe managing your cooldowns or your sky burst art so that you can get like a full chain burst and all that kind of stuff that's where i get really excited so for me it's the multiplayer like higher end content that i'm really like sort of banking on being good and i'm wanting to be good so that's that's probably where my excitement is. But if the story's a banger along the way, then the game's just a win. Because if the story, <laughs> if you finish the story and you're like, that was pretty sick, I'll be happy. But then if the end game content goes on to be what you you know what we're thinking it will be, then it's just going to be a great game. I mean, have you heard of this game called Final Fantasy fourteen? It's got, <laughs> it's, got, it's got a really good trial. It just I, I will say we said I think we might have talked about it in the last time we were on the uh, podcast. Final Fantasy fourteen just never clicked for me. Um I Listen. I tried twice before because they had that rework, right, when it first came out. So I tried it 
several times before the rework. Obviously, it definitely didn't click with me. Yeah, it, it would I never. Tried it. <laughs> several times since the rework, and admittedly, it's better. And I did end up investing more time in in you know going through leveling up. Uh, we even just I even just tried boosting a character to get yeah, that's into a mis- the end you game can't content. do that. That's, well, that's that's because nothing was working for me. I, I, I was, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, two so six nine. Everything. Two six nine's girlfriend can probably help you get into it, right? Yeah, true. she plays, right? You've you've told me she last loves time. it. She yeah. loves See? it, so she's always playing it. She can help you understand it. It'll be fine. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I love Final Fantasy, but the 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 MMO. No, it's just, just like it the only the only reason I'm bringing it up is because like normal raids in, in 14 feel really good and satisfying. Like that's one of the things that I'm also hoping to get out of grand blue fantasy is like that, that whole thing that you're describing of like the teamwork of pulling stuff off, uh, which is interesting because as I was paying a little bit more attention to some gameplay that I looked at yesterday from the, um, the first showcase, which happened like three months ago, give or take, um, I was looking at the way that they do the Skybond arts. So there's that mechanic that you talked about, 2.6, in one of your videos, and the developers also talked about it, which is whenever you pull off all four Skybound arts, because the game is four-player co-op, so if all characters basically get their ultimate ready and then they all pop it off in sequence, you get the special finisher. And what I noticed is that the finisher changes, and I thought it was depending on who finished the no. the chain burst, but it's based on who starts it, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, yeah. that apparently gives it a different elemental damage type. So are the bosses yeah. going to have elemental damage weaknesses? Is this something that yep, they told yep, you yep, about? Yep, yep. yep, yep. Please. So I've I've looked through just a ton of stuff uh, for like the the settings and like tips and stuff like that. And this is where I say that it's going to be a bit more Monster Hunter esque than people are really thinking it's going to be because there's going to be grinding for getting the weapons there's going to be weapon upgrades in the same way that there is in monster hunter there's going to be monster hunter part breaks there's going to be monster hunt monster weak points so there's going to be weak points that you can hit there's going to be uh bits that are more armored just like in monster hunter as well and uh there's going to be elemental weaknesses and different elemental um status damage types as well that you can inflict on a monster. So it has a lot of the concepts from Monster Hunter in the actual game. So I am excited to see what the end game content is and what the monsters are and all of that stuff that we get to actually like go out on these hunts and like take down. And the fact that the monsters actually have loot drops and like gems and all these like rare items that will be dropped as well. So exciting do, times. Do the weapons have like elemental uh damage as well or is that like based on character because it almost felt like lancelot is kind of like an ice type of guy yeah i think it's based on the character but i don't take it with a grain of salt because i haven't confirmed it but i think i have actually seen weapons with elemental types on them but i'm not 100 percent on that but i think there's definitely ones that have there's there's ones that have different stats on them and do different things I'm I'm looking forward to like the min maxing aspect of it uh, yeah. for sure. Uh, have you been paying attention to the characters at all, Paradise? <laughs> In, like I'm aware of. I think I know. I think so. No, uh, I, I was a uh, character I don't know. No, no, no. I, w- I was just gonna ask you like which which character seems like it's gonna be more your style <laughs> out of the ones that's that have been so, announced. That's yet. so hard because yeah. like they're. Do you it, know what it, this is the prob This is the problem with the game is they got anger characters. And there's more than just one that appeals to me. I'm sure it's the same for a lot of people. Yep. I, I, I won't speak for everyone, but um, like like you say, Lancelot, he's like the dual blade guy, right? He looks incredible. I love the way he looks. But then you've got, uh, is it Narmea, the, the waifu, waifu kind of looking lady? <laughs> Her moveset looks insane too. Uh, then you've got... Um, I have a, a friend of mine who told me that Narmaya is a character that is constantly saying, ara ara. <laughs> they know what they're doing <laughs> <laughs> they're now messing around <laughs> yeah um uh, there's more than that as well i think uh i think like siegfried out there with his like great sword he's looking really cool too so i actually think it's it's hard to pick one and that's where i think it i think it will trick it will trip some people up because you you play a character you're like oh i love this character right and then you just know there's another character there that's going to be, or at least looks really cool. So then they'll probably go on to unlock that character. And it's like, how do you pick a main when there's yeah. this many good looking characters? 
The, mm. See, that's that was one of the things that for me, it's it. I just find it really hard at this point because I want to see how they feel like to play. Because it's it's kind of like the same thing. You you jump into Monster Hunter and people, you know, whenever somebody hasn't played Monster Hunter, they, they come up and to me and they say, "Hey, what weapon do you recommend?" I'm like, "I recommend you go to the training ground and use all of them until you find one that clicks." Because that's what makes the most sense. Everybody's just waiting for that response. So this one's easy to get started with. No, every weapon is somewhat accessible for you to get started with. And so long as it gels with you. The problem is because we haven't gotten to play the game, me and Paradise, we're just like... This looks really cool. Is it gonna <laughs> is it gonna play cool? Is it gonna like mm, feel nice when I actually got, play it? It's gotta feel good, yeah. 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 So so it's like for me, I'm looking at like Percival because I really like fire based um, you know, fire based attacks and explosions and all of this stuff. And Percival, he's got like all of the fire elemental damage, he's got a flam bird, he's just like rocking around. So he looks cool. And then I was looking at the two guys with the guns, which again, it's interesting. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's a gun no, no, because, because listen, it's the closest I can get to a gun lens. I, I got yeah. the gun part. It just needs the lens part. So I'm looking at the yeah. two guys with the guns. Uh, we'll see how those pan out. I also think that Charlotta or whatever her yeah, name is. She's my favorite. She looks she looks really good, but I don't like that stupid crown she's got on her head. I was like, oh, can I just have that character without the crown in the head? Like that'd be perfect. I'll play that character. Yeah. But yeah, th those are like besides Grant because I'm also curious about Grant. I wish Grant had a shield. If Grant had a shield, it'd be perfect. But he doesn't. Yeah. So. How about how about you two six? You actually got to play them, so you have more insight than we do. No, Charlotte is definitely like my favorite character and. That's the thing, one of the big takeaways that I had from playing it the second time, just like how similar the characters are to the weapon types in Monster Hunter as well. Like Charlotte, They are? Yeah, Char Charlotte essentially plays like a longsword because you have like your triangle ability is like a parry. And if you parry it perfectly, you just go through the move and then you get massive damage off as well. And like uh, Rackham's like a, just a gunner. Um... The Lancelot is it, Lancelot's the ice dude, right? He's like yeah. dual blades and like really cool. Um, the Siegfried is essentially the great sword. He's even even so, has like the great sword timings. So yeah. Wait, wait. What do you mean great sword timings? Is it charge? Because I thought that when they said yeah, precise yeah. timings, I was expecting it to be that Japanese thing that they usually do in a lot of games, which is like you hit and then you press the button again when the when the blow's about to hit your enemy. Is that not the mechanic? It's basically that, but as you like come on the way back so it's like in between animation so it's like okay as your hair you press it bam as your hair okay. you press it bam and then you can actually charge it as well i think so it does Damn. have like charge decks so he has basically a true charge slash <laughs> <laughs> so yeah he looks really good but uh, so out of all of those which one would be the one that you like the most you just said that probably charlotta is is that still yeah, the case charlotta is uh definitely number one siegfried is just busted strong uh, Rackham, I had fun playing with because you can like, spam his buttons and get the damage out. You're meant to like uh, time it and get your bursts like, but correctly. You're, but, but you're mashing it. Yeah, but I'm just mashing it. And <laughs> it, I was even like told off by one of the devs. He's like, no, that's not the way that you're doing it. But like when I was mashing it, I was actually getting more DPS out. And he was like, no, you're breaking the fundamentals of our game. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, stop having fun. You can't fun. do that. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're probably the reason why they're going to nerf that mechanic. They're like, yeah. no, no, no. There was this one guy who kept mashing. We don't want yeah. this. This is not cool. <laughs> so, um... How do you actually unlock characters? Because I've heard you say in your videos that it was like with tickets or whatever. How how does that actually work? Because you actually got to talk to the devs. So and stuff. in the actual town area, there is a thing called a knickknack shop, and it's just one of the people from like the Grand Blue Universe that they've seen, and they come back and they set up shop in the town areas. You can go approach them, and one of the actual menus is called like the well, crewmate tickets something something crewmate recruit something you go into that menu and you'll see a list of all the characters that are unlockable at that time and then you could use one of those crewmate tickets to actually unlock a crewmate but how do you get the crewmate tickets how you get the crewmate tickets yeah. isn't by buying them it isn't a gacha i'm gonna say that again it is not a gacha game you're not spending money you play the game there's certain missions that you'll get tickets on there's certain like quests that you get tickets on we don't know how many tickets that you get and how frequently you get them but you get them just by, by playing the game just by playing the game see that that was actually yeah. one of my biggest fears because when i started following that game genshin yeah. impact didn't exist 
<laughs> so yeah. I was like, I wasn't even thinking about gacha games. I was like, I don't care. This is like some crazy thing yeah. that they do over there in Asia or whatever. I, just, mm. I don't care about gachas. And then in a post Genshin Impact world, was that also something that worried you, Paradise, where it could potentially be a gacha game? He loves a gacha game. He loves a gacha game. Well, here's <laughs> What's the your opinion on this? Oh, no. Yeah, here's the thing. I. Uh, so when I was going through like sixth form universities, this is quite a few years ago now, uh, you know, you only got, I, I used the buses and the trains, so you got several hours each way sort of downtime. So what have you got? You got your mobile, right? So <laughs> I do have some mobile gaming routes, you know, um, shout out to games like, um, FFBE. That was a, a Final Fantasy Brave Exvius. That was Bra the game Brave I Exvius. I, I remember that. For a long yeah. time. Um, and just various like random other ones, but. So there's elements of gacha that I do enjoy. For example, I play. I still play Honkai Star Rail. Uh, I really love turn-based RPGs. So I can't. It appeals to me in every way. Like turn-based RPGs, great character design. Uh, the combat because I like turn-based. The combat's really good. The bosses are crazy. The cutscenes, you know, they they put a lot of budget into those characters. So you gotta pay gacha for them. But with a game like Grand Blue, when you see it, I. <laughs> I feel like if it was Gacha, it would just it would just immediately put it off the table for so many people, and it would actually be frustrating to play because, like Two Six said before, with the depth of the combat maybe not being as deep as games like Monster Hunter, because in Monster Hunter you can play that one weapon for a thousand hours and still yep. not master it. I think from what we've seen of Grand Blue, it's not gonna you're not gonna get a thousand hours out of one character unless you just fall in love with that character because the complexity is probably just not gonna be watch there. me. So the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the joy is going to be in trying all of the different characters out, and obviously for a gacha format, that could mean big cha-ching because it means people are going to have to have to spend, right? But yeah. I don't know. I think for me, because the depth of the like the characters and the weapons aren't as deep, you're going to be switching characters, uh, which is why you need to have those characters available to you. Um, but that also does make me worry about the end game because yeah. we know that you're going to have to invest heavily into one character for like the super high tier content because you've got like levels and weapon levels and sigils and all this kind of stuff. So I think it's going to be really hard to hone in on one character and then commit to that character throughout all of the end game. And if you don't do that, it's I'm assuming that it's going to be like you're going to like do you want a handful of characters that are like level sixty or do you want one character that's like level hundred end game? You know. That's my. That's a bit of my concern there. Um, but I'm glad that the game isn't because I think it is more of a, a like an just an actual action RPG, whereas a gacha game is more like a live service continuous thing that they have to keep supporting yeah. and pumping out updates for. Otherwise, the gacha system just doesn't work. See, in in all fairness for for Genshin Impact, because I know a lot of times I give Genshin Impact a, a hard time. The main reason why I got sick of Genshin Impact wasn't even the gacha aspect of it which I find interesting because that, that appears to be what people usually complain about. <laughs> I was like, bro, I can't deal with this stamina system where I get to like play the game for 30 seconds and I have to wait a minute before my stamina regen so that I can keep playing the game. Because I, I remember I was exploring like this Asian-themed location and I was like, oh man, this place is so beautiful. I want to explore everything. So I'm trying to climb up a mountain and it was kind of like, okay, you climb for about a minute. Now, not even a minute. It was like 30 seconds. Now stop. Watch the stamina <laughs> slowly regen and then keep going. And I think that after like when I got to that area, after I climbed like the third hill, I was like, you know what? Nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I got better things I could be playing and having more yeah. fun than watching this stupid stamina gauge refill. The gotcha aspect of it never really bothered me that much, which I find interesting. But anyway, um, jumping back into the... Um, I wanted to ask you about something, and now I kind of lost it because I got lost in this analogy that I was doing. <laughs> was it Grand Blue related? It was. It was Grand Blue. I wanted to ask. Um, I wanted to ask Two Six about something specifically that you mentioned, but I've kind of lost it. It was about the um, the characters. Anyway, how were the um, visuals and uh, and performance? Did you play the PS Five version or the PC version? Uh, we played the PS Five version of it. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see how like the PC works. But as I said, like it feels like a polished game, so the performance of it is like solid across the board. Uh, the visuals, okay. I wouldn't say like they're the greatest, uh, but we were playing in like performance mode, not like graphics mode. So maybe it looked better in like graphics mode tuned up. Um, 
I mean, I, I wouldn't necessarily expect fantastic visuals from a game that's been in development for like eight years. You know, they looked fantastic yeah. back then, but you can only polish it so much at this point without completely changing everything over. That's one of the problems yeah. of mm. when games get kind of stuck in development for so long, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, so I wouldn't like say that, by, by the way, like, that. let me just put out a disclaimer. I will say that the game looks fantastic. It just doesn't look mind-blowing like it's making yeah. a boundary like i don't know first time you saw wind waker for the first time and you're like wow zelda wind waker is so shaded but it's still it's art style is art style is like amazing or whatever it's like it's not got that like wow in, in wow factor to it basically to me i always find that animation is more important than visual fidelity and i kind of feel like yeah. they're on point with the animations that i've yeah, seen exactly. so far. yeah they feel yeah they feel impactful they'll feel meaty so to me that's mm. the important thing uh yeah paradise you were saying something we guys kind of like trample oh, yeah, each other um <laughs> you're saying about games being like in development for so long that when they come out they're just kind of like not as graphically good as they could be or yeah. even just maybe gameplay mechanics wise isn't there i don't know if you could like did you follow blade and soul when that because that was an mmo I, years ago and i followed blade and soul for a good long while and then i gave up waiting for it because how long was that thing in development i i i remember Way by the long, time man. it came by the <laughs> time it came out i wasn't even as much into mmos as i was back in the, when i first saw exactly. it I, I remember and then even worse it came out and it was like yeah it feels it feels it looks it plays like a really old mmo and it's just come out for us so, <laughs> so that was a game that, like i was super excited for it took way too long and then it was like super mid when it came out and just skippable um but also going back to the conversation before as well i think yeah the art style plays a massive role in it too because a game doesn't need to look graphic like the fidelity of the game doesn't need to be extreme if the art style is still gorgeous and sort of compensates for a lack of fidelity which i think in kind of anime game anime looking games like that if they have that good aesthetic i don't think they need the fidelity yeah like a game that i'm actually playing recently is um xenoblade 3 the fidelity is not amazing but the art style <laughs> carries that game so friggin hard it's it's just like yeah. and it's not to mention it's a technical achievement when you compare like xenoblade 3 with literally any pokemon game that came out yeah. on the switch good lord <laughs> <laughs> it feels bad yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I remember what I wanted to ask you to six, which is, um, you know, you've talked about how the story you and the developers as well, you've talked about how the story apparently is like 20 hours and then there's going to be multiplayer quests and then there's going to be more story. How yeah. exactly does that work since you got the a better insight into it than like whatever translations I saw in their official video. So I haven't completed the game, so I don't know exactly yeah, like, how it works, but you will just play the main campaign and during the main campaign, uh, you just go through, you can go through and just do like normal story missions and kind of string it all together until you get to the end credits or during the actual campaign, you can actually just do side quests as well. So there will be activities to do that are side quests on, uh, along the along the way. But uh, if you just beeline it to the end, towards the end, you'll have like some type of scenario that opens that will give you additional story for about another 20 hours after the campaign is actually uh completed so bringing it all up to about like 40 hours of like story related content and then after that you'll hit like the big boy stuff which is the end game content which is i don't know blz bob I mean, the dragon that we saw <laughs> so <laughs> i mean i recently with the uh return to world thing that i also want to ask you guys about later i recently hit credits in monster hunter world the base game and mm -hmm. I think my save file is actually sitting at about 40 something hours. And that's with me, like still doing a lot of farming and playing very, very slow, interacting with chat, yeah. doing all that stuff. So it doesn't really, I don't see that as a negative. I know that a lot of people are like 40 hours. What? Yeah, but yeah. you're not, you're not going into Monster Hunter for the first time or even world for the first time. You're an experienced hunter. Um, <laughs> and I think I emphasize as well going into world for the first time, even as an experienced hunter from something like Jen or earlier, I think will still garner more hours because when yeah. you see the game for the first time, there's going to be more well factor, more exploring. You might die against a certain monster, you know, more times. But I think definitely, like all of us here have now finished world, you know, a long time ago. So even going back to it now, I think it wouldn't obviously just build up as many hours because we're just better at the game because we've played it and finished it in the past. True. And I think that they've actually nerfed the the monster's health pool significantly because 
I was just oh, and defender stuff, right? <laughs> oh, I did. I didn't use. I didn't use defender <laughs> stuff though. I didn't. I, I don't think that's. It's like defender is when is like. Uh, oh, you want to get on the highway to Iceborne? Yeah. Use the defender gear. Um. So the the other thing that I wanted to ask is like, did you get a chance to ask the developers like what their post uh their their plan for post release? Because we already know they're releasing two new characters in April, but like, what else do they have planned if they even revealed any of that? So I was asking a lot of questions there. So I actually got my friend to ask this question. I was like, could you ask this question for me? Uh, and he asked it, but they said at that time that they weren't ready to actually talk about their post launch content, which is part of the thing that kind of worries me about the game, but is also good in itself. It, I feel like they're making it more of a, they're fa focusing on just like the base game and that's their main focus at the moment. We don't know what the additional content is going to be, if there's going to be other missions or whatever, but they have announced recently there will be an April update with two additional characters, which is Seophon and... Uh, uh, Seophon and Tewin or something. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hopefully there's additional content to go along with those characters because I don't... Why would you introduce new characters and not have more content for players to experience or bosses to grind out or something to do so it would make sense that there will be additional content for us to have fun with but how much content i don't know yeah but like from your experience you don't see this as like a traditional live service type strategy that they're going to be nothing like that right it could be it could be but their communication of it has been horrid if it is, if that is the case but everything <laughs> that they've said is just like it's just going to be a rpg an action rpg that you play and enjoy but it's kind of like a mix of between both, it seems like they're going for, where it's like, there's some end game, and you can enjoy the game beyond its initial story, but it might not necessarily be like a live surface game. Um, I'll see, but it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. More, more rise than World, where World had like a bunch of like content, like afterwards, it was more Rise-esque, if I would say. Maybe, maybe closer to Rise. I'm not too sure. What would what would you have actually preferred to um, Paradise? Would you have preferred it to go more the the live service route? Because I kind of I kind of feel that you are more into live service stuff. Is is the vibe that <laughs> uh, I get? It really depends on the game, to be honest. So yeah. I, I genuinely like games that are just a bundled package and that it, okay. it's a finished product when it's like those are some of the best games on the market. Uh, but I can also say I would like live service games. Like if we look at. Uh, like I say, like, the, like I, well, what I'll say first is I think if this game was live service, I think they probably would have gone in a gacha direction or yeah. some kind of paid system for different characters. And I think that would have ruined the game. Uh, so I would, I'm very glad that they haven't done that. Uh, but I'm not against live service. It just has to be done right. It has to be supported correctly. And I can see why a lot of games try it and fail with it because you need that massive player base and they need to stick around. It's got to appeal to people. It's got to draw in new players. And I think it's just a massive investment for these like studios that are... Uh, so I think some studios are wary of it, and then other studios that have the funds try it, and they just they, they mess it up, you know? Um, yeah. Look, so. at, um, look at, what was it called? Babylon's Fall? What an amazing <laughs> game that was. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's gone. I mean, I'm, yeah, like, I remember when we played that in the first few hours, I, I just, it, it, all the pieces of the puzzle were coming together. You didn't even need to actually finish it, but, uh, I, yeah, we, I didn't enjoy that. You, you knew it was rough because people didn't even want it to play the beta, I felt like, because I couldn't even get that many uh, matchmaking going on when I was trying to play <laughs> that. I was like, bro, what is going on with this game? That's funny. Mm -hmm. Not, not to mention, it's just like, bro, whose idea was it that you see all of your four weapons behind your character at all times just like completely, you know, blocking out the rest of the <laughs> screen? <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. There's weapons all over the goddamn screen. That was that was a really weird one. But it's like when it comes to this um live service approach versus uh regular games and whatnot, the way that I prefer it is actually the way that Capcom does it, which is like, hey, listen, we do a game, we do one expansion, and then we do another game. Like, I don't feel like I get enough out of it though when they do really? it that way. I feel like there's still more there in I think World was about to get there in terms of like set, satisfying the community. I think that's why after a while the community kind of just turns on itself and starts doing some dumb arguments on like Twitter or whatever about anything because they're just bored. They just need like monsters to hunt. You got to think about yeah. <laughs> World when like Fatalis dropped or Elatrion dropped. 
all people were talking about were the monsters for like weeks and even Safi Jiva or even Colv that satiated the community for weeks. And I think every month in Monster Hunter, we should be having like something like that. It's not necessarily feasible because of the development and how much it will yeah. cost, but it needs to get to that point where we can get that amount of content that people are excited for it each month to get like a really cool new monster or weapons armor set to like chase after essentially. I think that's one of the reasons that people might not necessarily been satisfied with Rise because Rise basically introduced older monsters back into the ecosystem rather than introducing new monsters that players hadn't necessarily seen before. Interesting. So like you, there were a lot of people back then that were going like, uh, I, I, I'm waiting for the Fireborn expansion. I was like, that's, it's not happening. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm sorry. Is that something that you would have liked? Like to, to see a, a Fireborn expansion? Well, not necessarily Fireborn, but you get the idea. Another expansion well, to well, world. Another expansion to world. Um, no, I would have wanted them to move on to a new game, but the in-between content drops just be okay, a bit bigger and more substantial. Yeah. So basically so, you wanted it to be something where Okay, we uh here's the last content drop. Six yeah. months from now, here's a new game. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, 12 I think, months. I think everybody really wants that. <laughs> we yeah, exactly. Want. Yeah, yeah. This is unfortunately exactly. it's not feasible. But yeah, it would be yeah. great if they could do that. That would be yeah. freaking amazing. But um yeah, so Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, last round of thoughts, two six go. Um, my th last thoughts on it. I can't wait to play it. It could be an actual letdown. I just want to get people yep. uh, there. But I think everything's pointing towards it being a really cool, fun game. I think if you're a Monster Hunter player, please try it out. Just give it a go. You might not like it, but it's got loads of elements that you probably will like. Um, it's one of those games that the devs should be rewarded for not putting in crazy monetization into it as well. So that's why I kind of really want people to play. Because if this game goes well, then maybe people will kind of look at Baldur's Gate, they'll look at this and be like, maybe we will rethink, rethink our like monetization practices because uh, Star Rail was my first proper foray into gacha games. And even though I love turn-based games, even though I love the story in that game, I got super annoyed when I didn't have the right characters, I had to spend money, or I had to do daily grinds just to get some Oof. specific thing. So... It is yeah. what it is. I'm not a gacha man. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And, uh, I don't like microtransactions, but gacha is just like too, too much. The, the good thing about, I mean, in a way it's a good thing. In another way, it's somewhat frustrating. But the good thing is that we are getting a demo, which I'm expecting it to be shortly after the uh, event that's happening mm. tomorrow, which, by the way, we're recording this ahead of the second showcase for Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. So if something gets announced tomorrow and we didn't talk about it, that's why we're recording it in advance. But uh, right. <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting the demo to, to drop shortly after that. And um, it's, it's just a shame that the demo is only on PlayStation. I wish it was also on PC. Because yeah. I, I feel like that would make it uh, a little bit better. But 2-6... Um, Final thoughts on Grand Blue Fantasy. Excellent game. Excellent game. Oh, don't Have fun. Saying, Paradise. Two, six, <laughs> Paradise. What do you think? What do you think about Grand Blue Fantasy really? <laughs> I just say two six twice. It's like two there's two six and two six. It's yeah, two six I feel like, any thoughts. I feel, <laughs> I feel like it's every time that I go to uh, to call out Paradise, I, I wanna say two six again. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's enchanting Paradise. to listen to you. Um so I think from what we've seen so far, if, if you're like an anime action RPG player, because there's, there's a fair few games in that sort of genre, I think this is yeah. probably one that is worth trying out. And also, like, I'll just say, like, like you say, there's a demo that's probably on the way soon. If you have a PlayStation, you can just play it and know if you want to buy it or not, really. Um, I think as well, like you were saying about the PC thing, though, the fact that it, there's a few, like, rewards for the demo, we don't know what they are. I'm assuming it will just be, like, some really, like, basic yeah. early game couple couple bits and bobs so it probably isn't like really impactful at all but it's a shame that like pc players won't be able to play the demo and grab those rewards because that's like i always like that in games where you play the demo and you get a little goodie bag when you actually like load up the game for the first time after it's released um but yeah it looks like a fun anime action rpg um hopefully we won't be won't be disappointed but from what we've seen so far it looks pretty cool and yeah. it's flashy and action and crazy boss fights that's yeah. 
that's another one of the things that actually frustrates me a little bit is the the fact that if you pre-order on PlayStation, you actually get early access, but you don't get that for Steam. Oh no, you get right. I didn't know, know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been looking at the page, and I keep because initially it wasn't like super clear if that was the case or not. Because there's like really small writing on the official website that says, "Oh, the Steam version, you don't get early access." I was like, "Oh man." Oh no. It's like ah. Uh, Whatever, but I'm still I'm still hoping. But well, I just wanted to interject. The Steam players will have the last laugh because PC games always like run better. You can custom, you have more customization, more options. You can do your resolution and everything. Not always. If you have a good monitor, <laughs> <laughs> unless it's a terrible port. Yeah, unless it's a terrible port. Yeah. But in general, it's sh like you should have a better time on PC. It's like when you play like Monster Hunter World on PC. Uh, it's just some move, as you know. Yeah, so. but like it, you know. Iceborne is still on mixed reviews because of performance issues when it first mm. launched. Mm. <laughs> There's like, or like 3, Rise, is better, for example. Yeah, uh, Rise, Rise being Rise a game plays so yeah. good on PC. Yeah, Rise yeah. is amazing on PC. Monster Hunter Wilds. Were you guys watching the Game Awards live when it was happening? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, Paradise can explain what what happened that day. Go okay. on, Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> so we were like umming and ahhing like we wanted them to show it at the Game Awards uh, we were umming and ahhing if it would be shown or not and we just weren't sure and it, and in our time zone it means staying up until like 2 or 3 a.m. 4 a.m. time zone mine included zone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can't remember what day of, it was what day of the week was it again I can't it was like Friday now. yeah it was Friday we did Friday, yeah. the other videos on the Saturday. Yeah, so, it was Friday. So we had like all of the week's content like lined up. So there's no like gaps that needed filling, but it was like, oh, if if they don't show it, we can cover the stuff next week. And if they do show it, then we need to cover it like straight away. Um so our genius plan I also if my sleep schedule gets interrupted, I'm gonna be <laughs> ruined. So <laughs> we came up with this genius plan, which is that two six was wanted to watch the game was anyway because it's it's quite a spectacle when you watch it live like yeah, i have yeah, watched them cool. live before uh but i i was kind of maybe i was feeling pessimistic that day and i was like i just don't think they're gonna show it so i was like i won't stay up if they do show it just call my mobile and i'll get out of bed basically oh, <laughs> so two six is there watching it i'm going to bed and what i will say is it was on my mind as well so when i was like going to sleep I felt like I kept waking up expecting the call and it never came. Um, so eventually I just fall into a completely deep blissful sleep thinking <laughs> I, it's, it's not, it's not happened. I've woken up like three times <laughs> expecting it. And then at like 4am my phone goes off and I'm like, this is impossible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we shoot, shoot out of bed. Two six is like, it's happened. So we line, we, you know, we basically made a bunch of content at like 4am. Uh, oh then, my God. Yeah. That was, yeah. that was, that was our weekend. I I just straight up went to bed and did the content the next day. I was like, nope, you guys get the live stream now. We're good and yeah. I'm done. <laughs> but you guys it didn't. Was... You guys didn't live stream it, right? Mm, no, we did live stream. We just did like a reaction uh, to yeah. it. So basically, like a mini live stream, but like a, in a vod form. That's like our favorite thing to do, um, so that people could get like our initial it's, reactions to it. It's it's really good content, though. I love that type yeah. of stuff. So yeah. So when um when it was initially revealed, did you guys instant? I mean, I, since two six is the one who saw it, did you instantly realize there was Monster Hunter? Like from the very first few shots. Yeah, I definitely realized it was Monster Hunter, but also was like thoroughly disappointed from a content creator standpoint because listen, listen, listen. We we're coming up to the end of the year, and I thought, oh yeah, the games are finally finished. I, I, I can stop covering stuff. We can go on holiday now. Yeah, 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 I know. Then Monster Hunter Wild comes out and I'm like, this is the biggest thing that we have to cover right now. We have to make like three videos. I was like, no. And I was like, yes. I was like, no. New Monster Hunter, yes. More content to make. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. I, so was, I was like conflicted. I was very <laughs> much in, this, in the same boat because I was also like, yeah. ah, it's the end of the year. I'm just doing this live yeah. stream because why not? I was not expecting it at all. I was like, yeah. I was expecting more so to get an Elden Ring DLC reveal than mm -hmm. Monster Hunter. And then when it's revealed, I was like, oh, crap. 
I have so many yeah. things to do now. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know in, in the first couple of shots i actually didn't think it was monster hunter because of the music yeah the I music your reactions yeah. it was so funny to watch it was like is he gonna get it is he gonna get it? no he gets it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was it was it was the music and, and it's funny because i watched yeah. like davi vosk's analysis of it and davi vosk was like the same this music is is like not monster hunter at all because yeah. there's too much synth to it it's just kind mm. of like weird but that just like completely threw me off. But uh, Paradise, what was your first impressions when you fr- when you finally saw the trailer? Um, there were several things that you could like. What's what's the word? Speculate from what you saw see in the trailer oh, yeah. that got me really excited. So like the the speculation. Well, first of all, like the riding of the mount, I think is really cool. And for me, that spe- and we go over this in all of our videos that are already up. If you're riding a mount, then the world's got to be pretty big, otherwise why do you need a mount? So is it open world, or is it at least semi-open world, a lot bigger zones than what we're used to? So the mount got me quite excited in that it makes me lean towards it it being a much bigger open world game. Uh, And then you further, like, inspect that mount and all the stuff that's on it, like the little, like, you know, there's, like, camping stuff on it, there's an extra weapon on it, all this kind of stuff that then makes me think, you know, is there weapon switching? Is there, like, some kind of, like, you place the camp down yourself yourself because it's a bigger open world is it more survivally focused and i'm a massive like survival game fan so i so from like the speculation which we have no idea if this is like true or not but from that speculation standpoint what got me most excited is oh are they going in a a different direction for this monster hunter with it being more survivally more open world with the monsters being more like a living thing in the ecosystem in the world around you so it was that kind of aspect of it that was really exciting for me uh and I would say I would say that's the primary thing for me because the, it was a really short trailer. Like they didn't yeah. give us a lot. You know, there wasn't really that many. Like there was a, there was a lot of small monsters shown, uh, but there was, it wasn't like we saw like four or five big monsters that are like, oh, I can't wait to fight these guys. Or they didn't show a new weapon that was like, oh, I can't wait to use that. It was just like a teaser, a little bit of the world, and then it's like, oh yeah, you guys can deduce what what the mount means, what all of the ecosystem stuff is is meaning. Uh, so I like the speculating, but also. Yeah, I didn't see like a load of stuff that was like I could really latch onto and be like that new monster. I can't wait to fight it. That new weapon. I can't wait to use it. You want you want more facts, but I actually do think that Capcom is playing like the the content creators game a little bit, which is like, hey, here's here's a video. Here's a couple of interesting things. Now figure it out and go yeah. wild. <laughs> it, literally go wild, wilds. Go like wild. <laughs> <laughs> not even intentional. <laughs> it just happens. What do you think about it potentially being an open world? And do you think it will be two six? Um, I think okay. So there was an interview with Yahoo Asia where uh, Riozo was basically talking about how for each game. They have a challenge that they want to do and then they take it on and that determines like what the next Monster Hunter game is going to be. So for Monster Hunter World, it was probably oh, just making like a more of a broader console game with like a higher fidelity for game consoles. For Rise, it was probably like verticality and uh, using the wire bug and kind of making like a 3D open combat space, right? So for this one, if we're looking at when this game probably started development destiny was probably like popping uh breath of the wild was popping all of these games were popping they're probably looking at those other games and being like we probably need to go open world uh we need to look at what people were really enjoying about world it's like playing as a community the 16 player lobbies were a real big hit in world yep. maybe it is going to have those kind of like open mmo kind of hybrid sections that destiny has where you can kind of encounter other squads hunting in the open world and stuff like that so i feel from what they've seen the shots of the trailer with it being expansive kind of gives hints that it is going to be an open world is it going to be uh broader in terms of the multiplayer scope hopefully that'll be pretty cool because that'll be another challenge that they can add on top of that but we'll have to see because i don't feel like monster hunters truly met his potential of oh yeah i don't know i can go out in the world and see a diablos in his actual natural habitat just doing its thing in a big open world and we go to the spot and we hunt this diablos or three diablos at the same time or whatever you know i'm saying so hopefully it's open world 
<laughs> yeah. I, I think that the fact that throughout the entirety of the trailer, we only really see the hunter on the mount. You never yeah. see the hunter outside of the mount. People can say like, well, Monster Hunter Rise's trailer also had a hunter on a mount, but you actually see the hunter outside the mount doing other things. Whereas mm. in this game, you don't see that at all in the first trailer. It's just yeah. mount, 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 mount. To me, that definitely symbolizes that even if it isn't open world, I would expect the maps to be significantly bigger. Yeah. But what I want is I actually just want straight up give me open world. Like I want to walk into the hub and walk yeah. out of the hub yeah, exactly, without yeah. a loading screen. I feel like that is going to be extremely immersive and is going to provide an interesting experience. But they do need to not fall on that uh, Ubisoft trap. Is like, ah, you go here and there's a tower, mm. and that's going to reveal <laughs> all of these. Oh, in and then you go here and you get like a, a food thing for your canteen. It's like, wait a minute, I don't want a chore list. What do you mean? <laughs> You know there'll ask. be a chore list of some kind, though. I yeah. mean, yeah, there, there'll be, there'll be, but like, for instance, in Monster Hunter, sure, you have that chore list, but a lot of it is optional. Like, you do, there's a lot of hunts that you don't even have to do if you don't want to, right? Yeah. That's what I want. I want it. I don't want it to be like, no, but you should do this chore list because it's going to give you this benefit and that benefit and the other benefit is like, no, 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 no. I want to hunt what I want to hunt, and I don't want to do chores. That's that's yeah. where I'm at. More Elden Ring, less Ubisofty. Yeah. So, <laughs> what did you think about the um, monster hunter, monster hunter, the the monster density paradise? Uh, again, I feel like I want to see more before I really make my mind up because I don't know if that is just like a trailer thing. I don't know if is that just that one type of monster that like herds together, like the armadillo looking monster that like <laughs> you know herds together. I I think if we take it at face value, I think it's really good. I think it could lean to the world being incredibly immersive if you see like you know uh, a herd of a certain like smaller monster running past then you've got a freaking big monster chasing them down and grabbing one out of the herd and then you you know maybe you go into a different biome and there's a different type of monster that and it has all this kind of living world ecosystem because monster hunter world kind of in a lot of ways felt living even though those zones were a lot smaller and like narrower how they connected but if they can expand that across like a much larger map like we're expecting I feel like it would just be like the most immersive thing ever. And, you know, it's more emulating kind of like real life. Like these smaller monsters, they probably like there's a reason why like prey monsters are in herds because they need to replicate more because they get eaten. Right. Yeah. So like all of this stuff feeds into like how sort of real life creatures work, which is pretty cool. But again, I, I want to see it in action. I want to know, can we actually get this many monsters on screen? Are things going to be like popping in? Like what's the is there any performance holdbacks or just how far? can they go with this across different maps and biomes and stuff like that? It'll, it'll definitely be very interesting to see. I was, um, I, it just made me question because I was like, bro, there's so many monsters here. Has this always been their intention for the design of monster hunter to have herds of, you know, small monsters this big and they just never did it because of like technical limitations <laughs> or something mm. like that. Well, what do you think two six? No, definitely. I think, their whole like vision for the Monsanto is to actually have like a full on monster ecosystem. It's something that they're known for. It's something that they take pride in. Even if you take, say, something like the um, the turf wars, right? That is part of the ecosystem yeah. that they showcase in world, and they're just constantly building on top of it. And uh, one of the things that they included in world that was really cool was just collecting like the little pets and the ecology. I love that. Um, little pets and stuff like that and i feel like building on top of that just to have more collectibles outside of just hunting so the world feels a bit more like lived in um is definitely something that i can see them diving more into because they've like had a track record track record of, of doing it basically so yeah yeah i believe riozu even I, I mean they even mentioned in the website was it in the website or was riozu i don't know but in some thing the that i've read somewhere, trailer, i think yeah, it, yeah, One that was it. it. It was a, a video that Riozu did on the PlayStation channel where he was saying that, like, this is going to take ecology and whatnot to the next level, which I thought it was interesting because when you look at those herds, right, you have the, the big dudes with the spikes coming off. <laughs> They're, like, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of the herd, and the other dudes kind of, like, go around him. And the reasoning behind that, from at least my theory, is that he acts as the lightning rod for the pack so that the the other ones come close to him but not too close 
so that they also don't get struck by lightning yeah, and they don't cool. get struck that's by really cool. like i thought that was a really nice detail and it's just like the type of stuff that the monster hunter team is uh is always doing i feel like what about um what about those thick boys the thick boys that were chasing after the the little monsters because you know you're looking at them and you're like oh they, they look kind of like gosarag <laughs> almost yeah, like but there's <laughs> but there's six of them yeah, there's yeah, six yeah, of yeah, them yeah. So, yeah. what do you guys think that is? Paradise? Paradise. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've been I, jumping so, back and forth. So. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, again, we're super limited on what we've seen, but it kind of looks like perhaps a, an early game monster that you'd fight, because it, it, it doesn't look super, like, lethal and scary, you know, but it does yeah. look like something that you would be hunting. Uh, and I say early fight because it's not, you know, as you get later in the game, they get bigger and scarier and stronger. And since this is one of the first ones that we've seen, maybe this will be like, you know how like World had like Anjanath that was like one of the early monsters that you fought that was uh, like an experience. Maybe it's like that sort of equivalent. I think it's really cool that they're in a pack and it makes you wonder like, are you expected to hunt like three to six of them at once? And if that is the case, if we think about how Monster Hunter handles uh, multi- monster hunts and the health scales down based on how many monsters there are like so if we're fighting six of these guys are they all going to be quite lower health pool like so i start thinking mechanically of how that will work but it'll be interesting to see like what actually happens or even if you're meant to hunt like are you meant to hunt them are they going to actually yield you materials that makes weapon and armor are they going to give you like i don't know are we going to need food to survive in this now open world that we cook at camp or something oh, that'd be too cool. sure if they had proper survival mechanics into it, that would be sick. <laughs> Plus, it's, Monster Hunter has always had cooking and food. Yeah. But, so they have to just take it to the next level and make it, you know, like, maybe not as simple as a hunger bar, maybe it can, or something, you know, so it'll be, it'll be super cool to see how they go with it. I, I hope there's not too many survival. Like, I, I have a problem when games get too many survival elements and you have to, like, manage, oh, now you're thirsty. Now you're hungry. Now you have brain death. Like, I, I remember one now of those that cold. I played was, like, it's raining. Uh, yeah, it was, um what was that called? Don't Starve? Bro, I remember when I played yeah. that game for the first time, I was like, oh, man, this is fun. Oh. And then it's like, oh, you're hungry. I was like, okay, I'll I'll grab some carrots or whatever it was. And I eat the carrots. It's like, oh, those carrots were not good. Now you have like dementia. I was like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like your character is now crazy and you're seeing hallucinations and you're also thirsty and it's cold. And I was like, bro, stop. There's too That's much. So funny. But um, how about you two six? What do you think about the big woolly boys? Because I'm going to give um, you guys my theory afterwards. Not much, to be honest. I think they're they're cute boys. I I found it funny that they couldn't uh, determine to like run through the herd. They just actually just got like stopped because if you watch the video, they're like chasing the hunter, and as soon as the hunter gets the herd, they're like no food, and then they stop chasing the hunter. So easily distracted, distracted uh, boys. But um, I just want to see if those numbers for those bigger boys carry over to the actual like large monsters, like Raphalosses, and we as Paradise was saying can fight like three Raphalosses or something at the same time and how that actually all works because I just like hunting the big monsters. But do you, is that something that you would like, like hunting three Raphaloses at the same time? Yeah, if the mechanics allow it. In, with the current Monster Hunter mechanics, definitely not because I just feel like yeah. you'd just be getting clapped like left, right and centre. But if there's different ways of like uh hunting the monsters like you breed them down using like your mount first and then you kind of go in you fight the last one that's a bit stronger or something and it's like an apex uh i don't know alpha one that you hunt kind of like in the pokemon Arceus where they had like the bigger alpha crown uh pokemon maybe something like that that'll be cool so my theory is that they're actually introducing a new category of monster because like you know how up until this oh, point, okay, like mid range. Yeah, because up until this point we have mm. small monsters, large monsters. I think that those would be like medium monsters that you would always <laughs> hunt in a herd, kind of. Mm. That's like the vibe that I'm getting off of them. But who that's knows? big brain, big brain. Yeah. Big brain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta dig deep to squeeze information. Yeah. Out of that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> so what what is you guys' theory on the uh, lightning rods? It's either a big monster, like one of the like Elder Dragons, or it's just an environmental change. But uh, I'm, Paradise looks like he's got some... No, no, no. no. I'm not talking some... about the lightning strikes, the lightning rods. 
the pillars. Oh, the ones that are just the ones that are just scattered around the actual yeah, 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 whole yeah. map. Um, they just look like lightning rods. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We've seen weirder structures in uh, in Monster Hunter environments, so I don't know what to discern on them. It's too early to be like, oh yeah, they're going to actually be intrinsically like gameplay functioning or something like that. So I don't know really. I think um, at like at face value and at a top level, it looks like they're obviously trying to go for some like different weather effects or environmentally changing systems, like the sandstorm that then rolls the lightning storm into it. Uh, so at a face value level, I think those rods sort of will just function as ways to traverse like to guide you through the map as you're in the storm because you're going to have to maintain safety from being struck by lightning so either you want to run from rod to rod or you want to run from one of the rods to the herd that has the spike on it because they're going to get lightning struck first so at face value i think it might just be a way to guide and to give safety to the player in these environmental effects but i think actually what Tusik said before like what if the rods are like a giant monster that's like under the ground and it's like slowly like charging him up or something i don't know hmm. see that was the other thing that i was going to ask it's like did we put those rods there that somebody <laughs> Were else we the enemies <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i i just i just get vibes from like ancient civilization was potentially there before yeah. and then they just put those rods so that they could like traverse the the land Without getting struck by lightning, which is probably going to be an elder dragon, I mean, mm. you know, they'll eventually mm. reveal whatever the um, flagship monster is, and then we're gonna beat it. And then when we beat the flagship, we're just like, ha ha! But there was an elder <laughs> dragon all along. I bet you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Maybe well, it might be a game. Go on. I was gonna say, did you play Stories Two and finish? Yes. It? Yes, but I don't because remember a lot have, of it at this point. But do you, it well, do you remember the the worm that you the holes? You know, you were you were exploring and encountering yeah. these giant like chasmous holes, and it turns out that that was a big worm that then became a big elder dragon like moth. Yeah. So it like it's not, and it, it's a trend across all monster hunter games. It's not above them to like make the environment be impacted by like an elder dragon. So I think that is probably a pretty feasible idea. <laughs> Yeah, what, what I was saying, it could be like an actual gameplay mechanic as well, because a lot of the time we see um, in more like MMOs or something that overcharge mechanics. So maybe it actually factors into our gameplay. Maybe we can overcharge our weapons and get new abilities by getting lightning struck. I mean, th there's definitely a vibe for like, for for instance, for uh, lance mains because they could be like, "I'm the lightning rod." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lance mains becoming lightning rods. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think this is going to be one of the monster hunters where we finally get some new weapons? Oh, uh, I hope. I hope it's long overdue. Like it's exactly. very long overdue. So if if it I feel like if it isn't in Wilds, at, at that point, it's just like, I'm just giving up. There's, there's no new weapons anymore. You, 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 know? you think we're never going to get a new weapon? I, like, I don't know. It's like, I, I'll say this. Do you think they'll give us a new weapon, or do you think they'll give us a new mechanic, just like they did in World, just like they did in Rise, that functions how the existing weapons work, and therefore they're not giving us a new one? So, um... If you look at Rise, you had the Wirebug and all the Wirebug skills. If you look at World and then into Iceborne, you had like the Clutch Claw and how that imp uh, impacted your weapon movesets and stuff. And they also added like, uh, I guess you could say like back in like the Savage Axe mode and stuff, different things on the weapons. They gave like more options on the weapons instead of just giving a flat brand new weapon. So uh, when we look at the Wilds trailer and we see the mount and we see the pouch with the secondary weapon, maybe we can use two weapons at one time or maybe while we're on the mount we have access to all our weapons and that's a feature or maybe we can just switch or maybe there's mounted combat instead of a new weapon i don't know i hope there is a new weapon just put that out there but i wouldn't <laughs> be surprised if there's a, a, a layer another mechanic that they layer on top instead of giving a new weapon yeah i'm just hoping that there is like uh a new weapon because with these console based games like world they're trying to introduce as many new players as possible and i feel like having a new weapon that nobody's played before is kind of like a fresh slate for everybody so introducing a new weapon would be great and in those concepts like art pictures from the 10th anniversary book we did see some like pole lancey thing so maybe that's a new weapon i don't know maybe that was the insect clave maybe they've got a bunch of used unused concepts that they're going back to 
I want to see Tomfers. I want to see yeah. fist weapons. I don't want to punch things. <laughs> see, that, that, that's like where I'm at whenever people ask me for the, for the new weapon. I mean, of course, the best weapon to add would be the magnetic hammer, but um, <laughs> <laughs> that's never going to happen. Uh, cowards. But, um, you know, I, I think that probably if they're adding a new weapon, I think Tomfas are probably on the top of the list for weapons mm. that they could potentially add. Because I don't think they're adding the magnetic spike. Yeah, <laughs> that would be sick. That thing moves so crazy. It's just like it bouncing all over the place. Like, I love it. I, I've seen some videos of that and I was like, I don't know about that. That sounds yeah. pretty freaking... Like, that would be the weapon that they would add in the game after Wilds. Yeah. It is going to be the more arcadey type, you know, portable, another portable entry, something like that. But um, yeah, I, I don't know whether or not they're going to do it. I do think that, like Paradise said, <clears throat> I think there will be uh, a new mechanic of some kind. There's mm. obviously the the situation where we have the the heavy bow gun present on the um, on the mount. I mean, not heavy bow gun. I think it's a light bow gun. Actually. But we have the light bow gun present on the mount, and we don't know what that is for. We don't know if yeah. that you're going to be able to just put anything on there. Because one of the things that Ansel said is like. A gun lance is not going to fit on that bag. It's not yeah. happening. You're not, you're not putting a gun lance inside that bag. So I don't think you're going to be able to have anything in there, but maybe it changes depending on which weapon you actually have. Or maybe it's just like hmm. the heavy bow gun and maybe you can use the heavy bow gun while you're riding. Like, yeah, true. What, what, would true. You, what would you prefer to, Six? Would you like to like be able to swap between two weapons in the middle of a hunt? Um, I'm talking without you going back to camp. I'm talking straight up. You're in the middle of the battle and say like you can whistle and your mount runs by and you do like a special sh unsheathing animation. You do like you stow away your other weapon and you pick out a new one and you keep going. I don't feel like that's much different from what we currently have anyway because everyone just fast travels back to base, switches weapons and then go anyway. If they are going to introduce a mechanic, I want it to be as in depth as you're saying there where like there's some cool animation you can maybe like run to your mount your mount comes across as you and you jump off of it and you automatically switch weapons midair and do an attack a special attack off your mount by like jumping or something but um weapon switching isn't super exciting to me i want something cool like mounted combat being a uh, a huge feature of it i feel like in rise we had like combat, but you just kind of like the swiped at things. Yeah. Like, so they could like definitely build that out and make it better. Um, but when it comes to this weaponry and combat, I just, I legit just want a new weapon. Like just add in a new weapon. I think it would be like the greatest thing of all time. Like right now we need a new weapon. It'll just be chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, uh, Paradise? See, I was going to say two six again. <laughs> it's just like stuck no, think... in my, in my brain. <laughs> um, I think obviously, yeah, a new weapon would be like the preferred thing just across the board. Like, we've played a lot of Monster Hunter games now. Uh, like, I feel like both me and 2 6 are fairly like broad with what we can play because we will try like pretty much all the weapons out and see. Except you know, Gunlands. Each new title, see what. I know we've tried them out. It's just no, like no, it wouldn't be my main. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, we'll try them out and we'll see what it's saying, see what the new moves are, see if there's anything cool, you know, see what the new skills may be after those weapons. But we, we'll ultimately go back to one or two that are our main, but we will try and try every single thing and do a couple hunts on each one. Uh, so, a new weapon would, would be the first and foremost thing. But I don't know. I'd be, I'd be okay with uh, mounted combat if it's done, like, in a really cool way. I think the weapon switching, like, that could, that could be nice too like like you say we can already do it so it's not like it's a spectacularly like crazy thing but it would be cool to very quickly be able to switch a weapon so it's like oh the monster's just enraged let me switch out to my charge blade or to my lance because now i can play more defensive or guard pointy oh it's not enraged anymore it's a bit more you know it's a bit slower or it's got exhausted let me pull out my like dual blades or my uh my switch axe because now i can go like full dps focus and don't have to be so evasive i think that that kind of stuff is cool, but again, you can kind of do that already. There's just a bit more downtime in running back to camp. Yeah. What would be your uh, picks if you wanted to have like a returning monster? Two six. Uh, I, 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 I don't want anyone to steal it. Go ahead, Paradise. <laughs> <laughs> no, get Gante. 
<laughs> it was so cool in world. I think it's a really cool like how he is like a monster that just wants to like destroy other elder dragons. He's got the spike mechanics. He's got like the uh what's the like raging version of him? I can't remember. Is it just Ruiner? Yeah. Ruiner Nogagante. So I just really liked every single fight against Nogagonte, and I like how he was interwoven with the story and the elder dragons that like wreck havoc on the ecosystem. Nogagonte kind of like is a natural counter to that, but then Nogagonte becomes a problem. So I want to see Nogagonte. Yeah. Uh, for me, I think my favorite monster of all time is actually Altora, but we've never got her in a mainline oh. Monster Hunter game. So I think. Uh, uh, Autora coming in as like a elder dragon would be like the greatest thing of all time because I want the armor set. We never got an armor set. And wasn't well like Altura's theme like wasn't it also like causing all those storms at the end too? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, damn. Is, it, is it a crossover? Is it a crossover? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Two six nine just coming in with the wildest <laughs> theories right there. It's Altura. I actually, I need to go back and watch that fight again. Now that I think about it, ooh, it's time yeah. to make like a new video. <laughs> the theme was nuts as well for her, and just the whole laser beams that she shot out. I can just see that just looking so cool and on like a proper real time like, action game. It'd be like awesome. The biggest disappointment of that is that the bow guy gets the last shot on it. I was like, bro, <laughs> bro, <laughs> I wanted to wyvern fire that. What do you mean the bow guy gets the last shot? This is some garbage. See, that's why that month that game sucks. No, I'm joking. I, love <laughs> I hope we get number three of that as well. And they're not too focused on just making like Monster Hunter main, like mainline games and uh, the obviously just normal combat spinoffs, but. Yeah, we I, shall see. I I do hope like the the way that I always describe that game is like, listen, guys, it's like Pokemon if it was good. Yep, yeah. <laughs> true, 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 That's, true. It's pretty good a description, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like if Pokemon was good, it'd be like Monster Hunter Stories too. But you know, yeah. Uh, for me, it'd probably be the. I, I listen. I've been asking for this fight for so goddamn long. Again, I want something like it doesn't even have to be them but something like duran moran or jan moran yeah i want yeah, yeah, a fight yeah, yeah. like that where you're like on a vehicle or something and you're just like roaming through and stuff is happening all over do you guys ever play could lost with the mount now yeah it could happen with the mount. right in your mount be, you know no no but i i want a vehicle i want a big boat like listen one, one of the biggest disappointments <laughs> in, in sunbreak for me was like oh yeah we made this really big battleship that we have here we have the badass admiral in there just like you know we have luchica blasting off rocks from guys and i was like yes this is it and then it's like no just go in this arena and fight the monsters like bro oh we have a <laughs> boat we have a yeah. ship come on man yeah. like what are we doing that that's what i want you guys have played lost planet 2 oh uh, uh, yes i did but just only the multiplayer i don't think i did no See, because in, in Lost Planet 2, you had stuff like that. You had, like, uh, the um, there was one where you're in the sand-type vehicle, and there's a sandworm running around, and you'd need one player to load up a cannon. The other player's <laughs> aiming the cannon. And there's, like, little mobs that are coming into the thing as you're doing it. It's really cool. There's another one that's on a train. They have tons of these scenarios. I wish they would remaster Lost Planet 2 at some point, because it's, it's yeah. basically Monster Hunter, but with guns. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it that. sounds similar to like the sea, the sort of siege battles and how those sort of pan out, but maybe like if done better. So I, I think instead of it being like a, a monster's coming, we're setting up defenses. It can be we have this vehicle. Yes, that is you know ready to go, and we're go, you know you, you're on it. The monster's riding around you. Oh, me myself. <laughs> yeah, the monster's like going nuts. You got your vehicle. So yeah, I, I think that. That could be cool. And I think it's within the realm of possibility because they've done siege battles which are effectively the same, just not moving. Yeah. It's just like just like the entry fight in Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, dude. It's like give me yeah. something like that. I want that so bad. I was actually um I was actually hoping that potentially our hub in Wilds could be an airship. Like guys remember the Soratorium? <laughs> Final Fantasy style. <laughs> no, like we ha we even have it in in Gen U, Soratori. Yeah, like the, the true, ships true, true. Thing. And it'd be cool because technically the the whole theme that we're getting from the game, at least that's the vibe that I'm getting, is like wilds. You're exploring uncharted territory, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So 
Do you guys think that it's going to take place in the new world? Um, what video I was watching that's with somebody a, was going through question, yeah. like the map and it was like there was a whole deserty area that was unexplored. Maybe it was Gaijin's video and he was talking about like yeah. the. the I, I think Gaijin did that, yeah. Yeah, and it makes sense for it to be in a new world. Maybe that's why this one's more like world esque because they're kind of just trying to keep it to that like new world vibe, basically. So, um, but it's always interesting seeing people kind of speculate where everything's set in a Monster Hunter world anyway. No one actually knows where anything yeah. is actually set, but <laughs> everyone's like, with the map. So, yeah, hopefully it's a new world. What, what do you and think? Then, go, go ahead. No, say, same thing, really. I really don't, I'm really not too sure. Um, I think it could, could go either way. Um, but also, it may, like, on, that, on the topic that you guys were just saying, like, whether it goes either way, don't like, does it really matter like that much? No, because, like, it, it does. So like, <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. It's just like one of those things. Like, oh man, is it going to be in the new world? Is it not? Is you know? Because like, I'm I'm just looking at it and I see Scout flies, Slinger, mm. and the yeah. font logo is the same. I'm like, this is mm. probably in the new world. I mean, it yeah. makes sense. But yeah. Do you guys think that the mount could potentially be a portable camp because it's got like the tent on its back and all of that? Yeah, definitely. 100%. I think that's what they were alluding to. And like your mount is basically going to be like your portable base of operations and you plop it down and you can go to a tent as well. Because it is just a tent in the games anyway. We just yeah. go to the tent and we sit in the tent for like a little bit. So now we, we're camping boys. <laughs> so yeah. You're, you're on the same boat, Paradise? Yeah, no, I think that, I think that makes the most sense. I mean, I I would kind of wish as well if we do have the ability to deploy like a camp anywhere. Maybe going back to like talking about wild hearts, how you could put like things down in the world that would maybe harvest resources or do things. It'd be cool if you could, you know, maybe you put down things around the map, then you go over there, you set up your camp, and you check out all your little traps and stuff, and that would be cool. But and then I know, maybe, we have to wait and see. I, I, that that's actually a good I didn't think too much about that, but then maybe you would eventually go there and there's actually like or maybe you get a special notification, hey, a monster showed up to wreck your harvester of whatever. <laughs> and you have to go back there and you have to fight a monster in order to keep <laughs> otherwise if you don't defeat the monster, it's like, oh now your resource harvesting is cut to half until you collect some materials or something like that. That actually could present some interesting dynamic uh mechanics to it. Mm. Yeah, especially if it is open world. You know, maybe on the uh, the lightning rod towers, you could set up like a little generator and make a little camp around it because it's also like a safe zone around it, right? Because you won't get struck by lightning. So something like that. Yeah. What's your What's your theory on on the the mechanic that we see of the everything just getting the the dirt just getting like washed away once the wind blows in? Like, what do you think causes that? That was a Diablos farting. You see. Ah! <laughs> I always knew they had powerful farts, those guys. Holy crap. Yeah, I don't know. I think may it could be a seasonal change, which I don't necessarily think it is. I think it's definitely an Elder Dragon thing. I think they always do hints towards what the Elder Dragon is is in their trailers. So uh, I think it makes most sense for it to be some ec ecological ecological change based on some Elder Dragon uh changing the environment and messing it around because that's monster hunter right it's like you yeah. start a monster hunter game it's like the environment is being damaged and the monsters are raging you must find out what's going on <laughs> and then you go hunt some monsters and then you find out that it's, it wasn't that monster that they thought it was going to be and then it was some big monster in the end and it was some elder dragon some uber elder dragon that was eating everything yeah how about <laughs> you uh paradise yeah i think uh again that like face value i think it's probably just showing either a change in a weather condition or perhaps seasonal shifting. Um, and I say that because in that shift, you can actually see uh, like grass come out and the trees start blossoming. So it makes me wonder, is it a seasonal change? If it is purely tied to like the extreme weather condition of the sandstorm and the lightning storm, then it probably is like a monster that's like doing something that's causing it. Um, so some, something like that. But I think at face value, it might just be a, a, a seasonal shift in the world. And then it makes me hopeful that maybe like things can get snowy and then, you know, then the, then the season will change and it will be like autumn and then it'll be summer, you know, that kind of thing. It, it'll be it'll be interesting to, to, to see. I, I still think that it's also like an elder dragon. And I think that 
my theory was even that potentially, you know how you have all of that sand. I'm thinking that it's not actually sand. It's some type of conductive material. And that's what allows the monster to basically just like rain lightning all over the place ah. whenever there's whenever the, the, there's the sandy stuff coming on, which is why everybody kind of like runs away. Because if you see the the scene where he's running and there's no lightning rods around, the lightning actually seems very intentful in chasing the hunter down as it goes. Ah, okay. So, That's you know, it'll interesting. be interesting to see, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot more to be said when it comes to Monster Hunter Wilds. <laughs> What do you there, guys? There, there was something. There is something. Go, go ahead. I want to. I want to get your take on it, right? Okay. Because it's like the main thing that people are disappointed with when it comes to it, and something that we saw when we made videos as well. Because people were like, "Oh yeah," a load of people were just so excited because it's a new Monster Hunter game, but a load of people were like, "Visually, it doesn't look as impressive as they thought it would look." And then even the other day, we had that whole kerfuffle with Asmund Gold talking about world and how he did, wasn't super blown away by the graphics in world as well what do you think about all of this okay so th that's like two topics right so first yeah the graphics of world in 2024 i look at this game and i'm like bro world looks amazing <laughs> especially on pc if you're using the the 4k texture pack it's insane how well the game is aged if you look at it and you're like that's a six-year-old game you're crazy there's no way that games looked this good six years ago, but not just that. There's no way that game still looks this good now. I think the game not only looks good, but it still animates excellently, which is what I feel like the Monster Hunter team excels at. If just the attention to detail that they have to animations just like brings things to life in ways that no type of visual fidelity can ever bring. Like you can have someone who's the best developer in the world with visual fidelity. They can bring something that's, it's not even 8K, it's 80K. 80K <laughs> on like a, a relatively small screen so that the pixel density is just absolutely insane. Like it looks better yeah. than real life. But if it doesn't animate with the same quality and passion that the Monster Hunter team puts in their animations, I don't care. It doesn't yeah. mean anything to me. But having said that, I think it still looks impressive even with 2024 standards. Now, in regards to Wilds, I think that the only thing that I really noticed in Wilds that I felt was potentially not as detailed was like the Wooly Boys, if you pay attention to their animations and some, you know, if you're really going through it frame by frame, you'll notice that there are some sections where they do the whole thing with their texture stretching because like they, yeah. their arms or something is moving in a way and then the textures just kind of stretch out so that it makes sense. But you can kind of see the texture stretching. That I think is like the only thing that you can point out. I think that the reason why people say it doesn't look graphically as well as good is because when you're in the storm and he's just like caked in all of the dust, the textures <laughs> look simple. Because yeah. he's just like caked in dust and they just like, oh, let's just splatter brown all over the hunter and he just looks like a big brown model, right? And I guess that you can kind of point that out. But, you know, the visuals and animations is usually the last thing that you polish up in a game. So I believe that the game is going to look much better by the time it releases. I think the problem is that people are used to it being the other way around. Like with the Watch Dogs example, where the game, when the first couple of trailers that you see for Watch Dogs, <laughs> there's like, oh my God, this game looks yeah. amazing. And then when the game actually comes out, it's like, actually, this game doesn't look that special. I, I'm not going to say it looks bad, but it clearly doesn't look with the same thing that we had in the trailer. And I feel like Capcom's like, no, we're not going to do that. Here's what it looks like right now. It might look a little bit better when it releases, but at least people will know what to expect. And, yeah. you know, I've never really been something who's super uh super like oh i need to have the best visual fidelity ever so i barely even pay attention to it i mean uh there's a lot of people that will go out and unironically say that rise and sunbreak look bad and i was like no i think it looks great it doesn't look as good as world from a visual fidelity standpoint but i still think it looks great and it animates yeah. beautifully so i don't care but yeah I, I understand where people are coming from with that line of reasoning mm. But I think they're just maybe overanalyzing things. Cool, cool. Wait, what about you, Paradise? I actually want to know what you think about this as well. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I think when I think of World, like World is actually a PS4 game, like a yep. base PS4 game. 
So it's crazy to say that World looks bad. I, I don't even know. Is anyone even saying it looks bad? Because it, do, it doesn't look bad. No, it, no, what, I, what Asman, Asman said was it looked okay, basically. It looked okay. It was serviceable for what it, it looks like. And I can understand why he said that, because yeah. compared to, say, something like, I don't know, Cyberpunk, which is pushing the boundaries of like their particular engine, or even Fortnite. Fortnite, Fortnite right now on the latest engine like unreal version unreal engine version looks pretty cool uh and there's other games out there that just look like they're pushing the boundaries of like uh polygons and everything or whatever yeah. they're pushing out so yeah but carry on well i just feel like then it's a compliment to world like if world just looks all right now and it's a ps4 game we're now on a whole nother console generation mm-hmm. we're like six years later down the line and if world came out today and people are like yeah it looks okay that's like a massive compliment to world <laughs> it's six years old. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So I don't know how anyone can actually maybe get mad about that when it's, to me, I would interpret it as a good thing. It just shows that world still holds up today. Yeah. Um, I do think the wilds trailer was a letdown in terms of the fidelity. Cause we had world. We're now kind of expecting the, Step up. the next bump up yeah. where, you know, we're now on PS five. Uh, that was PS four. So I'm expecting to see even you know, even higher fidelity, as well as that same amazing animation and polish of uh, how the monsters move and interact with each other. So I think from that small trailer we got, we didn't see a big step up in graphics and we didn't see a big step up or even perhaps an equal in terms of how nice the animations of the monsters were as well. But I think we haven't seen a lot of the game. And I also think any game in a desert area (laughs) is always going to look kind of a bit meh. Like, it's just sand. It's like sand on the horizon, sand around you. Like, how good are you going to get sand to look, even a, even if it is a next gen game? So there is that element to it. So I'm reserved, hoping that it will come out with even better graphics. But from what I did see, I would say I was I was expecting more. Yeah, I I think that there's something to be said also about um, just being realistic about what you can achieve. Like we were talking earlier about how we expect it to be more open world and bigger and have more Mm. things in the map. And those things don't come for free. There's a price Mm. that you have to pay from a development standpoint. And that might mean that you can't go as visually intensive as other games because, you know, you've already seen the amount of like little monsters they're going to have in the map and there's going to be lightning striking all over the place. And there's going to, you're going to need to have AI of big monsters in the middle of all that as well. And the map is supposedly, we're expecting at least, is going to be huge. So to me, I actually think it's a good approach. It's like, don't don't chase after the visual fidelity. Because if there's anything that a lot of games have proven over the years, is that even though visual fidelity can be a selling point for your game, it's never going to be the selling point for your game. Just look at, like, Nintendo. <laughs> right? It's like their games yeah. look good, but not from a fidelity standpoint. They look good from an art style, animation, all of that stuff. And they still deliver fantastic experiences, but they're not really chasing after, like, oh, we got to go 8K, 12K, let's go. So I actually think that's a good thing. I'd, but I know that people are going to look at it and going to be like, oh, it needs to look better. It's like, okay, it is what it is. I think there's a, there was a precedent set though when World released and it was just a step up from the portable games, which is expected, right? Yeah. And uh, people are expecting that it, kind of yeah. another iteration of that, and it's not going to be feasible in any point, especially if they, as you're saying, going open world where there's going to be more AI on the map taking up resources. There's going to be expansive areas. There's going to be more draw distance. It isn't a closed off map like it. We're not just bored into the ancient forest and it's just the ancient forest that we're rendering or whatever. So it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out in terms of people excitement as we get closer to the game as well in terms of like the normies that don't normally play Monster Hunter. Yeah. Uh, because I feel like World had on its side, side, wow, I'm seeing this game for the first time. Wow, Monster Hunter, what is this? Well, I haven't seen this. They've seen Monster Hunter now, but this one looks not as like drastic of a change from World to what Wilds. It's so weird, wacky saying that. Um, so it will be interesting to see how it all goes down. And there's a lot of people that are actually discovering Monster Hunter World right now. Have you guys been seeing the yeah. success of the Return to World <laughs> campaign? Holy yeah. crap. Holy moly. <laughs> so are you guys also going to make a Return to World? 
I already did uh, a while ago before it was Return to World. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> we went we went back and we did a few videos and maybe even a stream. Like this was before the actual campaign went off because it was like it's like that weird time where like some break had kind of like been over and we'd done that. Yeah, and you know we hadn't got any new news, so it was like, oh, what's there to do to go back to World? So. We can't, I feel like we actually did it before it was cool. <laughs> um, but like in terms of right now, when everyone else is doing it, I don't know. I haven't like if there wasn't so many games coming out, yeah, and things that we problem. had to like get ready and prepare for. I think I would genuinely would be there, and we would probably be spinning up some Monster Hunter content, maybe. But like we've got this this first quarter of the year is mad. It's so. insane, yeah. It, it's just like there's too many games that right at the beginning of the year. I don't know what's going on with companies that they're just like, <laughs> whenever we release games, they need to be all on top of each other. They need to trample each other so that we make sure that people can't actually enjoy them properly. Okay. Just like, here's five games in one go. Enjoy. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's unreasonable. But uh, yeah, the, the recent uh, numbers are actually like 163. The, the best one was 163,000 concurrent players on that's Steam. Crazy. And that's concurrent because there's actually more people playing the game, just not at the same time. And then there's consoles as well. It's just yeah. like the number is absolutely insane. It would be interesting to see what the numbers hit when Wilds uh, comes around because it's like... Is it going to be like much bigger than the world launch though? It's going to be exciting to see that. Now that people from Asmund's community know more about the game, now that other people have like got into it, now that it's been basically six years since World and people are waiting for kind of like a sequel to World, that kind of anticipation's built up. It could be exciting times ahead. I'm I'm super pumped for it. I hope that Wilds is even more successful than World. I think it'll be hard because World, in yeah. a lot of ways, is almost like the Dark Souls for a lot of players. It's like their first Souls game. And so that's always going to have a special place in their heart. And I think that overcoming that is going to be very hard. But I think there's definitely potential for it. But we'll see. Yep, yep. We'll see how it pans out. Uh, what are you guys going to be working on for the, the next couple of weeks? I mean, you're going to be doing Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. What else? So oh, in the Power. schedule, go on. I was going to say Power World is, is coming up this month as well. Um, <laughs> Pokemons <laughs> with guns. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> I think there's probably going to be some more like rebirth stuff on the run up to that as well. Uh, there's, there is a lot. There, there is, I'm trying to think, yeah, what, what else is there to say? So from just a perspective of like covering stuff that's coming up as well. So a lot of the videos that I will do is cover the games that are on the horizon. So it will be stuff like Black Myth Wukong that we are covering. There's Where Winds Meet that I did a video on the other day that looks pretty exciting as well. That's an open world kind of game that kind of looks like uh, Ghost of Tsushima, but with more of a Chinese vibe. Oh, I remember. Than that. I remember. I was I was actually about to ask you, what game is that? Now, now I already know. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Uh, there's Chrono Odyssey, which is another game that I've been covering a lot on the channel, which is uh, MMO that looks like it's got a bit of potential, but it is a Korean MMO, so it could just be Ooh, like a bait and switch. That's dangerous. <laughs> so it could just be a bait and switch. Um, but for the next few months, it will be those big marquee titles that we are covering, stuff like Grand Blue, which will take up the next month or so of next two months or so of our time with like intermittent games like power world maybe even in shrouded or any other big updates that come out for games as well because the thing that really kind of catches you off guard is the updates for games that you've you've been covering but just come out of nowhere essentially as well and one of the games that we are forgetting about is Gra uh not grand blue <laughs> i'm saying grand blue but blue protocol is somewhere on the horizon somewhere and from what we played even though that game isn't going down too well in japan they are Ooh. making updates to improve it so by the time it comes out over here it could be a really good game because we did actually enjoy the core gameplay of that and it was a really really fun game but they've just made making missteps on like the actual development process of it so yeah see that's yeah, that's actually cool. one of the things that i feel like a lot of um developers coming out of not just japan japan but asia in general because like you have also korean developers chinese developers whenever they're working on those types of games i feel like they really underestimate the value of a worldwide launch 
Because if you yeah. look like if you look at Monster Hunter World, sure it was a huge evolution to Monster Hunter, but I still think that one of the main reasons why it did as well as it did is because it had a simultaneous release. Because if it didn't, would it still be successful? Yes. Would it be as successful as it was? Hell no. No way. You will never convince me <laughs> of that. There is no <laughs> way. Because you just have like a whole community of content creators that kind of like congregates. It's like, oh man, this game yeah. looks amazing. Let's let's talk about it. Let's play it. And whenever you have it come out in Japan first, it doesn't really work. Like look, for instance, at Lost Ark, right? You guys covered Lost Ark when yeah. when it was only available like in Korea or whatever. You probably used VPNs, whatever means of getting access to the game right and then no we were in korea we were in korea oh <laughs> right you guys you guys i, for, I forgot you guys did a, a trip to yes they loved us <laughs> <laughs> they but, made, that was, i don't know if you knew but that was montages oh. where they were like oh westerners try lost ark and there was just like different streamers and stuff and just were seeing our faces pop up in these random videos <laughs> but it, it's like you know and then eventually it comes out here was it successful yes was it as successful as it would have been if it came out day and date worldwide of course not. Not, e not even remotely close. And I feel like that is one of the problems that they have over there with stuff like, again, Blue Protocol, which I would be interested in checking out Blue Protocol, but not if I'm getting leftovers like two years after it released yeah. in somewhere else. Like I might still play it every now and then as a player, but I'm not going to cover it as hard as a content creator because it's, it's just not worth my time. It mm -hmm. sucks, but that's just the way that it is. Mm -hmm. That's also the reason why it, World was when I really started covering Monster Hunter because I always wanted to, but it's like, dude, this thing's coming out in Japan. <laughs> like, yeah, true. It's true. Just like one year later, everybody already knows. Like, well, what am I going to do? So, yeah. It's, it is a logistics problem, though, because localization yeah. is really expensive. And then, obviously, for games that are multiplayer like Blue Protocol, the servers are going to be really expensive and they'll have to set that up in like each country that's going to be playable in so that they actually have like decent ping. So I think I can understand like why they wouldn't want to take the risk because the cost alone to get it to be a worldwide launch versus just in their in their country or their continent I think is probably pretty astronomical, but when we see games that succeed with it, they probably make that back like Oh yeah, no time. Yeah. Over. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, I'm sure I'll have to invite you guys a little bit later again because I still want to talk to you about like Dragon's Dogma 2 and we'll want to yeah, like true. analyze uh, how we feel about Grand Blue Fantasy after we play demo and stuff. So I'm going to be pestering you guys a whole lot. So. <laughs> feel free, feel free. Be, feel free, yeah. be ready. But for now, we are uh, two hours in and uh, I need to let you guys go back to work because you have your own channel to manage. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very much for taking the time and being super flexible because like we set this up what was it yesterday that was, that was impressive yesterday, yeah. yeah we set this up <laughs> yeah. just so, for you Rick, and no one else no one else no, no, <laughs> special deal special deal thank you I appreciate you <laughs> anyways that's gonna be it guys there will be links to Eric's Gaming you already know what they're gonna be working on make sure to check them out over there subscribe check out their videos uh, hit like buttons do all of that stuff and that is going to be it from me and from Paradise and from 2-6. Y'all stay strong out there. Peace bye out. Bye-bye.